Right, right everybody, welcome back. It's quarter past, and we will restart the meeting. Um, Martin, not with us, he's attending a funeral at the moment, but he will be coming back on Superman. Uh, do we have Lindley with us? Uh, Lindley is here. Excellent, welcome Lindley. And this takes us now to, um, this is on the separate late report um, papers that came out. The Three Waters Better Off funding, uh, page 25 of that separate report. Now, Chantal with us online. Yep. Um, so I'm going uh, <laughs> yes. to present the report for Chantal um, on the side of myself and Chantal with Peter and Chantal. If we can come up, answer any questions that might come up that I can't answer. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we have a limited time period to get an application into the DIA. Um, who actually have to have approved our funding application by the 30th of September. So when it came out, we thought we had it on the 30th of September, but um, that operated this one slightly differently. Um, so this funding is 50% um, funded by the Crown and will be funded 50% by the new water entities. So that's a really important point to consider um, because of what might happen or not happen in the future. So the total allocation from a better off funding through Central Otago is 12.84 million, and that will be released in two stages. So the first of these tranche one is for 3.21 million, um, and that will be a, a, available once our submitted programs approved by the DIA. So the second tranche of 9.63 million will become available um, after the 1st of July 2024, once our assets are transferred to the and that the water entities will actually be debt funding that, um, that payment back to government to fund the tranche to part of the funds. So um, staff have actually prepared the recommendations in this report based on the expectation that council will want to spend tranche one um, by July 2024 um, prior to getting tranche two. You could, however, you are, however, allowed to carry that funding forward if you don't want to spend it um, in two separate bits. You could spend it all in, um, in tranche two rather than tranche one. Um, so in order to expedite the process of identifying potential work that could be undertaken, a review was un um, undertaken of all the projects that were submitted by staff for funding for the 2021 long-term plan. So these were either programmed into later years of the long-term plan or they were not included due to funding constraints or they were and then staff were able to um, add, add additional come up in the, in the period in between. Um, one of the things that uh, was a bit of a common theme was that there are projects in the long-term plan but because of cost increases or changes in scope in that the funding available to to do, undertake those projects is it sufficient? So you can use this funding to um, top up things that are in your long term plan or to bring them forward, but you can't use them to fund projects instead of funding them yourself and you have your team. So we then um, grouped these projects into programs, which uh, contain kind of groups of projects that had similar things. We did a reality check um, regarding readiness to proceed. And so that incorporated some of the learning that we've um, got over the last four years of delivery and the large programs of work within the infrastructure area. Uh, a common issue that we identified was optimism bias within, within the organisation, and we certainly learned that in our infrastructure work uh, regarding both the, the work required and the time it will take to um, prepare a project to be construction ready and the potential cost of that work when it comes um, to to deliver it. Um, so for this reason, we have presented a number of projects that will enable pre-work to be undertaken to progress programs of work in tranche two or alternatively those pre By the way, you would need that pre-work. Mm. Considerations in, in terms of recommending the projects that we've put up were the ability of council staff in the market to respond quickly to deliver the work. Um, both in terms of the investigation, the design, consenting requirements, procurement and construction. And that identified that while there's a number of really good programs of work that could deliver great community benefit, most of those are going to need further work to um, refine them to the point where they'd actually be shovel ready. 
So we had recommended that, um, as an example of that, that $500,000 be provided um, for property work to enable seismic assessments to be completed on council buildings and to progress designs, robust, do robust cost estimates and prepare information for tendering. So there were lots of little small projects um, as well as some big projects that were put forward by the property team. Um, it, each is standalone pieces of work. So you could use tranche two to actually progress a program of work on council buildings where you went in and you, you went to our building and you did the things that needed to be done there more cost effectively in one hit rather than picking off like 15,000, 30,000, 50,000 individual projects over many years. Um, so provision of that summer funding in tranche one would actually enable that um, property team to prepare um, that program of work and identify how the work could be coordinated through tranche two. So the program of work suggested is that which staff believe, um, Ben Chantel and I, um, that we believe can realistically be delivered by 2024 and it's work which aligns with the existing scope of activities that are undertaken by council. So we, we've made that um, assumption that a lot of that work, if it wasn't funded through this, um, would eventually need to be funded by council at some point. Um, so we acknowledge that there's always a little bit of personal preference around um, some of these different projects. So we have a, a recommendation of what the work is in the resolution. We've put the rest of the recommendation into the options. Um, and there's a couple of items in there that I think you're going to consider reports on following this one. So um, how do you want to do the discussion around that. I'll leave it to you. Okay. There's probably just two that I would point out that we put in that we think are going to be really important, particularly when you go into tranche two. And one of those is that wellbeing assessment because we're required to measure the success of our projects against well our, our wellbeing framework. And we've actually identified we don't really have a wellbeing framework, so this would enable that to be done. You're going to probably need to do that for the 2024 long term plan anyway, so this would help fund that work now. Um, and the other one is um, tranche two has an outlined in the report um, quite different requirements around the engagement with EWE to, um, to enable you to put forward a program of work to and so we're just recognising that we will need a bit to be quite a bit of work around that over uh, the next two years as well. And that falls outside the funding agreement that's been um, already agreed. The fact that uh, we would use the funding agreement to set up the work program, how we discuss all the projects for the individual projects that are outside. Right, thank you, Julie. There's a couple of clarifications. One in particular, I want to get for us councillors' questions. In the option one on page 20, 33, we talk about supplementary funding to progress 21 24 LTP projects of 900,000, but above that at the bottom of page 31, we talk about 800,000. I presume that's just a typo, it's the same thing. Yes. And under that 800,000, that includes the Alexandra Library upgrade. I'm presuming that's the Alexandra Library upgrade for 600,000 that we're talking about yeah. later on, 650, I think. So, yes, yeah, so the two projects in there were the Alexandra Library upgrade and also is um, going to be a report coming to you around um, the digitisation of the property okay. files. And so it would enable those projects that have been put into this LTP that there's mm -hmm. not enough funding to complete. So my first question is, out of this money that we've got under option one, we've got 650 of that 900,000 as Alex Library, we've got the RFID for the libraries of 400,000, you've got the library bookshelves of 560,000. I haven't done the maths, but that is a big chunk of money. And I'm just wondering when I look at the criteria, which involves reminding myself it's on page 26, sustainable low emissions economy, delivery of infrastructure that enable housing development, the delivery of infrastructure and or services that support yeah. local placemaking and improvements in community wellbeing. I'm presuming it's fitting into three. Um, yeah, so we, when we look at them, it, because it's got that community wellbeing um, criteria in there, 
most of the work council does um, will tick the box in, in the community well-being in one way, place or another. There's then the additional one on sustainability and land development. I, what I would suggest is if you're looking at things around land development, realistically, you're not going to be delivering that within a two-year period, so they've probably tried two projects. Um, and when we did we did encourage projects around sustainability, particularly around um, buildings, building heat efficiency. Um, those um, were in that group of projects that came from the property team. And when we started to look at that, you might be going in and putting um, something into a building to make it energy efficient, but then you're going to come back and do seismic strengthening on the building. So it kind of made sense that if you're going to do those things, you go to a building and do the whole lot together. Um, and hence and he that, that put in the, suggesting that the property projects will probably go as much to each one. And just to supplement you said my question, I'm focusing on the library, so 650 for Alex is not budgeted in the LTP. The RFID, was that in the LTP? I can't remember. No, it, it, it wasn't in the, in the um, LTP. And the reason we've kind of, we've included that is that um, the opportunity efficiency in the library through um, it, as I said people will have different priorities around these mm -hmm. things so so Chantelle yeah. and I looked at that project and we thought it can be implemented within two years it has the potential to be some good operational cost savings library bookshelves and furniture in the LTV um, I haven't put those um, I'd drop them down below so they wouldn't they wouldn't no, meet the threshold. Yeah, they they would be on your backup list. Um, well, well that's really the call for you to make. On, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. But I'm just what yeah. I was what I was trying yeah. to understand was that this list has come to us based on things that perhaps didn't make the LGP. Not necessarily all of them, but those that's one point six. Yeah. In libraries that wasn't in the LPP. Yeah. Yep. Martin, we're on that track one funding. Um, I, how long have we got? Uh, 10 minutes. One of the classic things that tends to happen through the LTP process is I think things like funding in libraries just gets dropped out. Um, because of, um, the pressure on the things that you really, really must do, um, that kind of get put to the side a little bit. Um, so I've, we've, we've given a total there of 2.13 noting that there'd be one, one million and eighty thousand remaining um, and then we haven't um, <coughs> wanted to suggest which pro there's some strategies in there and I'd suggest you need to look at that list of strategies and agree whether they are the ones you think should be in um, because it, you, know, you need to have kind of pick from those ones under the under the 2.13 involved what you want to do. Okay. Nigel just, just to, while we're talking about libraries, it's noted that this would improve the health and safety of staff, improve operational efficiency and free up staff time. Is there not the potential when you start automating work systems to actually have a save on staff costs? Yeah. 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 I don't. I and think if so, there's that, limits to what I can um, make assumptions around, but it would be. Could, could potentially be an assumption. I, I don't know what I don't know what kind of resource and levels they have in libraries though to be able to make that statement. I don't think the goal of improving the system are from the libraries, given we have a growing community and that service is well used by our community. But it would certainly aid in what they can focus on and certainly would help in, in having gone and done some time in our libraries myself as understanding our business better. I, I really didn't appreciate things like what the movement your hands make when you have to check in books and everything else, and the twist and the weight and everything. Um, we have significant health and safety risks there for that sort of work. Yeah, um, yeah. Type, um, injuries. I mean, I don't want to get sidetracked into specifics around this conversation, but in most businesses, when you when you introduce automation, one of the prime drivers is to save on operating costs, and and. And they may not necessarily result given the particular circumstances of, of um, each situation, but to just to, to not have it as, an, as something to be discussed or looked at as a, as a potential plus for the expenditure of money, I, I struggle with accepting that. Um, 
Sorry. <clears throat> the community wellbeing framework and data set. I just wondered to what extent that's going to be complementing or duplicating the work that OIC is doing in that space at a regional level. Um, so that, that is to complement it. They will be using that as one of the inputs. They're working with the Otago Regional Council in that space on that wellbeing assessment and that service was kind of to take it to another level for central Otago. Answer that question quite confidently, because I ask those very questions. <laughs> Brilliant. Anybody else? Neil, you have that look. Well, yeah, <clears throat> only because I'm struggling to try and sort of actually see a cohesive list in a table that makes yeah. it easier because I'm in a report going back and forwards and it's just if I have my two screens at home, I'll be OK. And in fact, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to build a spreadsheet so I get some head around just what it actually looks like. And I'm wondering if it help us with a, if that's possible. To, otherwise, I'm going to struggle to know what numbers are going where because I think I think whatever resolution we make, we need to be, if we change what's in the, um, in the report, we need to actually detail it in the resolution. And I found the same myself. I wish that we, uh, like the one, the community facilities upgrade 3.2 million isn't broken down. Makes, but it's also if we had a, I can't remember what they call, but like we do with grants that have, you know, the, 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 the things that are ticked against the criteria, whether they match it, whether they don't. I'm just not. So we went through everything in this list will meet, meet the criteria. Um, and I've talked with Crown Infrastructure Partners around the things like the strategies to check that they do still meet and, and they see they will. Um, we, we went, there's, a bit, there's a list of about probably 50 projects. Uh, and some projects might have been $25,000. Now, when you're managing um, reporting for the uh, Crown Infrastructure Partners, if you're going to get down to tiny little projects, it's going to be the administrative burden on that will be absolutely massive. Um, so for that reason, we try to group things into clusters. Um, I think there's an opportunity to refine into the details. So for example, if you spend um, $800,000 on parks and reserves on community recreational facilities and public spaces, <laughs> there's the opportunity to come back and, and, and have a conversation around the detail that will make up that program. At, at, at this point, I thought it was better to um, just group sums of money to certain types of work and then focus on the detail later because I'm not 100% confident how robust some of those estimates are for the work that was, was made up in there. So it could be that there's one or two things or two things that we're prioritising now, but the rest could come back with more detail prioritisation. But what it does in the meantime is means we can get the application yeah. and, and the clear through crime infrastructure partners. So, so I have um, shown sort of a list of, um, of things. Like this, there was work in swimming pools, there was work on parks, there was playgrounds, um, but you know, it, it came to a lot more money than what is left to spend on it. So I think if you're able to come back, post the application going in and look at that list and say, well, we'll think that one, that one, that one, and that one are the ones that should see. Uh, I don't think that's a decision you have to make today in order to get the funding application in. What was the thinking behind not putting in the wheelie bins at 750k? I think then that's money I believe we've budgeted, which could be used somewhere else or saved, as mm. opposed to what I'm saying is a whole lot of excellent, nice to have new stuff. Um, I find that three quarters of a million quite attractive to save off our budgets if you're able to do that. So um, if you've got it in the budget, which I don't believe you have, um, you couldn't put it into this. Well, I wondered about that. Yeah, but you you can't have... If it's in your budget, you can't put it in. You've got to use your budget first. But I don't believe it is in the budget. Um, but we actually sorry, believe that... Sorry, sorry, I'll just pause. We're going to use reserves. No, no. So what um, we will do is put up a, fu a funding application to MFB um, part of the waste minimisation for part of those big bins because yeah. they're green waste. Yeah, so there's, so there's, I swear, it's, the decision was to fund it through reserves, but yeah. we are looking um, because there is the alternative funding mechanism through EFB um, that a number of other councils have used for new, new bin rollouts, um, particularly where it's around um, organics or reducing the size of them. So uh, how successful have those other councils been? Um, and what, is, and what percentage did they get? Um, between 50 and 100, I okay. believe. Uh -huh. 
So that's the same reason we can put up roading projects because they are get funded, can get funded from Wakapitaha as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Just a wee bit more sense to understand. I'm just concerned. It's not a fait accompli here, but there's a. It's really difficult in this setting to go. What about? What about? What about? And I'm sure there's a lot of what about around the room. Um, and it probably is because you do an extraordinary good job. Good reasons like that behind all of them. Yeah. But here now, it's going to be a very long, difficult exercise to go through all of these to get better understanding why we're here, which is what personally I would prefer to going OK, but I might be on my own there. No, no. Do you not require a specific level of detail in the funding application to say this is what we're spending money on? You can just say, can we have $2 million for recreation facilities? Um, we will have to put some wellbeing assessment around that, but yes, we can say that. We'll put about as much detail as in, in this Like we said we were going to spend money on pipe renewals. We don't need to say where those pipe renewals will be, what, how much per project to be style, just a sum of money. Or a sum of money for pump station upgrades. We didn't have to say what your pump stations were. Like that. Uh, and I, so, so we did start off with the thought that we would give you a very detailed list. Um, having worked through that very detailed list myself, it was like this, this is such a massive amount of information. How do you make a decision around this? This is picking winners and no one's going to agree on anything and being consistent um, because there's so much personal preference in that. So that's when we actually pulled it back and said, well, there's kind of some themes in this and what are the themes that could get moving really fast? And the property stuff by and large needs a bit more work done on it. Um, the parks and reserve stuff actually was stuff that could get moving quite quickly. Um, there's um, the libraries one was one that could get moving quite quickly and potentially have some operational cost savings. So while it might not even be reductions in staff, it could be things like when people are ill not having to bring in extra casuals and that sort of thing. Yeah. And so I think you do need to look though at those strategies and the list of strategies and say um, because more on the list than there is funding available and really need you to prioritise in that space and say, do you want all those strategies funded or not? Um, and what then whatever is left goes into um, either libraries or recreational facilities. Would probably suggest the recreational facilities has um, the ability to get um, some really good ones out of that list that's, that sits behind that we can bring back to you in another meeting. Yeah. Um, you just want to understand better the the 2.1 million for recreational facilities and public spaces. Um, and I, what I really just say then is that most of those projects aren't ready or are already in the budget, so therefore they're not not relevant. Um, no, some of them are in future years. Of the, well, none of them are in the budget right now. No. They're in the lot later years, yeah, so. or they're things um, that are going to cost more money. So there's un, there's there's, there's what, I'm picking out right there's too much uncertainty about what they actually could be, whether they'll be shovel ready in time. Oh no, that, that there's enough on that list that you could spend that money okay. tomorrow. Um, I think you know there's things like um, tennis court resurfacing, playgrounds. There's sand filters and swimming pools. There's new yeah. liners in, in the swimming pools. Um, Half mile, there's still reserves. Yeah, there's some developments. Is there any money set aside? Sorry, I'm just trying to go back and forth through them. Because I see you can use tranche one money to do the scoping work and getting projects ready for tranche two. Have we put money aside for that as well in one of those? Um, so that, that is sitting in um, those strategies. The strategies are in, in the um, resilience stuff because it's around the size and persistence of the buildings and the resilience. So in the resilience, there was half a million dollars for um, all the property pre-work that needs to happen. And, and that's across um, all the halls in the community as well as other council buildings. And then there's um, money for generators, for 
tibial, so we've got one for the many events in Cromwell because they don't have emergency generators in those ports um, and the wiring on buildings so that if there's an emergency, they can actually be hooked up. Those are good investments, whether or not trying to actually happen. Yeah. 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 And they also uh, there's also the ones for the Starlink communications for each of the hotels. So if the, if there was an emergency event, um, those locations could still have contact with the rest of the country. Well, I can't help thinking that some of this money from the stuff that we haven't got, or that people have talked about that has been ongoing and been supported board about hockey turfs and all that stuff. Why don't we just fill our boots with new stuff? The rest of it's business as usual. I mean, how you fund it, where you fund it, yeah. Yeah. So one of that was for um, um, two was one of the projects yeah, on the list. So there's a lot of projects on that yeah. list. Yeah, that could could protect. But you can choose. If you said we want to spend one million dollars on parks and reserves, you can come back at another meeting with a list of projects. Say that one, that one, that one, that one in a priority order. Um, but there was, didn't seem worth giving you a list of fifty projects today for you to try to sort through that. I'd say the contrary view, Stuart, with the economy to go into and then mm -hmm. struggle with some people. Mm -hmm. I look at this and see ways that we can actually not, you know, we can use this to, to save money, but we don't have to spend so mm -hmm. the seismic strengthening. We know we're going to have to do that. We know it's going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> you know, bridges, mm -hmm. don't, they don't fit the criteria, but we've got a lot of big bills coming up and some new shiny stuff. What was that legislation passed in Wellington yesterday that they weren't, the hot, hot hospital wasn't? They changed the rules on seismic assessments. <coughs> and yesterday, last night, it was 530 years, but the Hutt Hospital, the seismic assessment, now realising that it isn't. Well, because I was quite. I think that's not quite. I think that's around. Um, that's around the brain and the building owners have to strengthen their buildings, and when some um, building owners identified they had new background building, they double their tenants to vacate when they might have seven or twelve or twenty years to actually do the work. Yeah, so that's what it's got to be real hasty. Sounds good. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. 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 Y
you'll see that on Terrace Hall there's an earthquake strengthening job, but there's also another job to put in a um, disabled ramp. Well, if you were going to go there and do an earthquake strengthening upgrade, you'd probably put the ramp in at the same time, wouldn't you? Say so, 60 grand for disabled ramp. Well, it might not just be a terrace, it might be on a couple of different um, walls. Uh, because there's, a, there's sheets of paper that sit behind this as well. So um, this is why, you know, there's, there's lots and lots and lots of projects in there. Um, there's lots of toilet projects, um, reserves projects. So that's too much detail to put in the funding application. We need to kind of group. So if, if you could get um, a thinking around how you um, want to what, what's important is, is the seismic assessment and moving that forward important and with the, the, um, the work for um, emergency management um, or not, and just put a line through it if we don't agree that it's important, then at least we can kind of get down the list and get a sum of money allocated where you can come back then and break up that, break, break up what sits underneath those sums of money later on. <laughs> The strategies is probably the, um, the space that I really encourage you to have a look at in here now too and say is that so he's yeah, all these pool jobs are sitting behind that. What does that housing needs assessment get us under the strategies? Um, so I believe you're considering a report shortly around that and this was to support what was in that report. Um, this, the Alexandra Library is what was needed for the following report. Um, there was a little bit of talk between Wayne and I around mm -hmm. each of this report come after these, those or before them, because you kind of um, have to make a decision about whether you think you should fund those things. But the destination management um, business case. So um, is that something that just comes out later as detail? Just, um, so I would say, you said, said you were going to spend, but yeah, there's quite a few strategies in there, and I don't know whether they're all ones you want to fund or not. Um, but you could, you can move money around within this program later on too. Um, you could say, well, we're going to put five hundred thousand dollars into strategies, and this is how much. These are the strategies, and this is how much we'll spend on each of those. Or we're actually now we're going to reduce it up to two hundred thousand. We're going to put three hundred thousand more into um, recreation offices. But I need a list of projects to put into the funding plan. Jordan's <laughs> taking the approach with a, a stimulus funding of having all projects there and funding available so that we can move and shift it to make sure yeah. we use it all. Um, but it was it would still need that prioritization yeah. done. Like, and look, if you wanted to add, money, <clears throat> add to the resolution that you wanted to come back at the next meeting and look at what the projects were, or you wanted to approve those in following elections in November. Um, exactly what the detail was behind those, then, then that would be fine too. Um, it's just making sure we've got something we can put into the funding applications. We don't need to do that because I mean, I'm saying destination management plan 200 grand, housing needs assistance 200 grand. Mm. That's a lot of money for us to hear with no, nothing really behind it. Go, yes, Lynn. Well, there's clearly quite a bit behind it. There's a bit behind it, but yeah. we haven't got yeah. and, and, and while I recognise that we haven't been given that, actually give it to me because absolutely to make the final decision I think you, you've done the best your best cut or your cut and my cut. I know. Could be I know. Yeah, and we, you've acknowledged yeah. that. So I think if we can put something together today says here goes the um the groupings that we want yeah. the funds for and then at a later date approve the specific projects then we all get better outcomes. Yeah. And it's not then so we can't just say Julie you made a poor choice then but yeah. what the hell was you doing? You know that's yeah. we don't want that. We want actually yeah, yeah, I think that yeah, would be useful. So, so are you saying that the list of recomm recommendations for approval that we don't do that today, that we just do a more generic? Which is what I guess that's where we're a bit stuck. If we're able to. Recommendation C is that council is supplying a list of projects or initiatives to seek funding for. <coughs> but you're saying that's yeah. not really what we're doing. We're just saying this group of things. Yeah. And then we will choose the list at a later yeah, time. So, so, for, so, for example, I mean, I'm looking at the, I'm having trouble understanding the EU Maori engagement for trying to do allocation of ninety thousand dollars because I'm just not understanding why we should do that. But uh, should, should we be talking about that now, or can because I don't want to approve it 
I don't want to approve a specific recommendation. You know, I don't, and I can ask you what what's behind it, but. I'm wondering if the actually answer is that if we go to our recommendations on page 25, we'll do A, B, C, D today. Do you need E done today to progress things with that time frame the government's given, or can we do E uh, potentially workshop some of these rather than come to a meeting and try to do it? <clears throat> Just due to the complexity, we need to get an understanding before we make decisions. And and if so, change E and F to um, these decisions. You know, future decision. I'm not sure what we're doing, but uh, the timing factor. So the, do we and the F have to be done now? It might need to be slightly more than somewhere between there and there, because yeah. <clears throat> for my own safety sake, if I'm signing a funding yeah. agreement yeah. Yeah. and you're not agreeing to anything going in it, then I've been a little bit reluctant to do that. I think this, this but if your concern is that we won't ever agree to anything, or that we have to be able to, in good faith, say to the government, now we do have. Yeah. Well, I think I think the way that Jeremy's tried to group them is it's so non-specific that we have the absolute ability to come back and yeah. prioritise it. So, I think I think that's. Um, I have very deliberately that. done that because it's almost impossible for yeah. a staff member from council to sit in front of you and say, "This is what I think you should do," because there's fifteen million dollars worth of projects mm. being put up by staff, which when you think they've got twelve point eight overall, that's not necessarily that bad. But for this three, I've had to say, well, there's going to be some winners and losers here, and who's going to be the winner and loser, and I still have to come here. To the <laughs> the problem I have, Julie, is that you've got fifteen million dollars of project put up by staff. Yeah, and that's my problem. Mm. There's, it has it's it's come to us too well refined too late, and mm. I understand why you've done that. Mm. And again, it's what we talked about earlier on today. The time pressures, uh, alongside everything else, is immense. But we need to have, I think, and more of the government's view in this. But it's a question of how we do that within the time frames and without creating a whole lot more work to get a better understanding of what to put up and see if there's anything that we can dismiss. Martin. Am I right in making the assumption that <clears throat> this process, Judy, you've, you've gone for a sort of a fairly generic description of projects? Right to, to get our foot in the door to secure that funding. Once we've secured the funding, then the next step is coming back and having a more detailed look at actual projects where we as governments can step in there and start making some choices based on what we believe is the list on priorities from A to, A to Z. Right? Pretty much. It's just whether we need to make those decisions immediately. But I don't have time we have if we don't. When I'm reading this, I, I, my understanding is we this does give us the opportunity because if we've got the if, if there is flexibility built into this process, then we ask for X, we get Y, then we decide how we're going to spend Y in a more detailed fashion. So you can, um, when we put the funding application up, we can put $6 million worth of projects in there. You're only going to get 3.21, but you can choose later which of the 6.2, which projects you do. So if we did that for the stimulus, we put up a much longer list of projects than we were um, expecting to be able to deliver based on the estimated costs of those. And then we could swap them around as we need, and we can come back and, and get that sign up. I think the first question is, do you want to apply for $3.21 million now yeah. and get that funding by the end of the year? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I think the difference between that stimulus was we knew that that was being spent in that space. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this is like saying, well, you've won $3 million on Lotto, were you paying the mortgage and buying some bins, or were you having some nice cars? It's, yeah. it's that difference of water stimulus was always going to go on water things, yeah. and that's easy. But if you're saying we can apply for $2 million for parks and reserves yeah. and then decide where you want to spend it later, well, then at least that gets us the money to then decide yeah. where we're spending. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I don't think the sums of money matter too much because you can increase those or reduce those through, through the program. You don't have to stick to 90,000. And Julie, I think it's one thing also that focus on the strategies because understanding that is where we do that strategic thinking for tranche too. So it's not this kind of process again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're taking a longer view of the central tail. So, so did I hear, well, I heard what, maybe I, wasn't, maybe I wanted to hear this. We could just attach that list and say three point million one million dollars of these things. Yeah. Um, isn't that isn't that sorry, but so I mean, that's a good simple. reason why we wouldn't do that. Okay. Um I think at this stage, and that is because the reporting requirements on a small amount of money are onerous. Yes. And so it would become it would cost us to do 
101 small little things with their Tuesdays. So that's another good reason to group them. But isn't he saying we attach that list for now and then we find we find it we finalise yeah. it later, but we oh, yeah. attach the list. He goes the list. It's so this 95 million. We want 3.1 towards it, and then we can go through yeah. and, and yeah, get 3.1 million. We would we would say there's one million dollars for libraries, for example. There's three million dollars for parks. There's nine million dollars. You know, because if you break yeah, it yeah, down, yeah, yes, then yes, yeah, then, the yeah, yeah, so refine that list down under the categories with it, with libraries X, um, pulled Y, blah blah. Adds to <coughs> ninety-five million dollars. Three point one towards that would be great. Thing. And if you would restrict yourself further, I think at the moment you see the detail was like yes, yeah, 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 Wellington doesn't need the details now, it needs the, the, the strategic thinking. We'll deal with the details once we've seen the colour of the money. I think what we've seen the colour of the money is meant to get on with yeah. the presumption that the money's coming. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So what is it? We're not agreeing to what's no been suggested money wise in front of us today, other than we thought we see him pull that money from the other. Yes. So what does that do to, to the recommended option one and how how would that now read? It wouldn't. So if you go back to the actual recommendations. A, obviously we receive it. B, we know that it comes in that manner. C, notes that um, we need to supply a list of projects and initiatives, which we can do by saying our intention at this stage is to spend approximately no, 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 two million on this, two million on parts, yeah, okay. etc. Yeah. Um, D authorises the chief executive, and I'm wondering because the CEO and the governance manager are having a chat. There might be some other words. Um, and D and E. D and E can come back to you later. Can come back because I we, we need to have more of a lot. But we also need to get on with it. So yeah, yeah trying to find that get the money first. Get the money first, we'll decide how to spend that afterwards. No, so D need to go through now. Does D need to go through now so that Snatch can sign the yes. agreement? Yes. Yeah. So it's E and E that are coming back, not D and E. So, yes. so, so, so it's E goes through but without the recommended list. Is that what's saying? No, it won't be the list we've got at the moment. It won't say 650 for the Alex Library, but it might say that we're we're looking at two million dollars in library funding. I mean, the, the total can be well over the three million. I understand. Yeah, but there is a specific list in the recommended. No. So that's dropped. That's out of it. That's out of it, and it will come back to us so that we. Well, can, well there will be a list. The books say libraries X million. Um, whatever yeah. your some categories are, that you've got in there. You got. That's what you do, isn't it? Well, I think that's what George is about. Yeah. Members, the, the higher level. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not this, not option one is not higher. Yeah. So, so if we get down, you know, to parks, like like emergency management, there's actually two projects that we put up there. Plus, then there was a whole lot of properties around. Um, you use those subheadings as the as yeah. the as the, as the yeah. So, and, and no dollars in the in the so recommendation. That's what we there's, that, there's nothing listed there. Yeah. Anything listed there is still, if we get the funding, is still subject to our decision. Well, we, we have to do, or, to do it or not. Yes. Yes. As Julie's proposed, it is still subject to your decision making and prioritisation. Yeah. 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 So we're, what we're saying is E and E would come back to you later yeah. to decide. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to. And, and so we did talk about the fact that, like, to go through this properly with you would take a day. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and I've got a bit of it's time. So, it's true. So, mm, yeah. yeah. yeah it's it's money. Good stuff. Try to lift it up to more generic. Yeah. Tracy. I just have a question about, and correct me if I've just missed part of this. There's a whole lot of expenditure getting ready for tranche two, but we don't know if tranche two is going to happen. So, why would we be spending? Because you're going to have to do that. The work that we're putting in, you're going to have to do for the long term plan. Um, and I, I think we should assume it's happening. Yeah. Because at the moment, it is what the intent of the government Well, our is. assumption is the uh, reasonable level, isn't it? So I don't know if we'd be a little bit. So the government is not saying if tranche two happens, they're saying it will happen. I guess we are cut down. Some of them into that by thinking if there's a change in government, if the nature of the reform changes, even though the notice will be reformed. So, so we just we're trying to hedge our bets against it. There is no uncertainty from the government at this stage that tranche two will not happen. But a lot of that tranche two, like well, the seismic stuff is. Oh, seismic yeah. stuff yeah, that we we know we have to do. Doing our small so business, I understand that, and I don't disagree with that at all. What I'm saying is spending money on stuff that we. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> 
But if it's going to be utilised for the long term plan, why would you not do it anyway? We need to, I mean, there are items there. And I've mentioned one I'm Iwi Maori engagement. I'm struggling to understand why we would do that. I but can clarify that for you because we wouldn't normally put that in. So the reason we have done that is because mm -hmm. the French troop has very specific requirements around um Iwi engagement. So for Church One, we have to um, demonstrate that we have engaged with Iwi and we've taken um we've considered their feedback and how we're going to deal with that. For Church Two, we are we are required to demonstrate that we have prepared a program of work alongside and collaboratively with EWI. So um, there's going to be some costs in yeah, I understand that. Yeah. They, they've got a consulting company, I and, and when we consult with them, they charge us for their time. Yeah, so they charge us for that's that's It's like $70,000 we've already allocated over and above their consulting costs. I think is they've got a limited, limited liability company that, <clears throat> that we're required to, to consult with so they're in a monopoly situation and whatever consulta consultation time and resource they put into it they charge us for so why would we give them another ninety thousand dollars on top of that is beyond me. But at the right. moment that ninety thousand dollars isn't specific just to Okaha, it's for engagement with Ewe Māori. It is a requirement to access the funding. So if we don't provision to fund it, we can't access any of Tranche 2. That's that's sort of the bottom that's line. That's the reality here. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring us back to the situation we have in front of us because I suspect that we'll continue another day that conversation. Julie, can Two questions. One, can we do it in such a can can we do what needs to be done if we go A, B, C, D now and drop E and F off? Yeah. And that will mean that it's going to come back to us in some shape or form. And I personally believe it's going to need a workshop because of the amount of detail and to and fro and to get it to a point where we can say can make a decision. Okay, on that basis, I'm going to move A, B, C, and D. Can somebody second that? I'll Thank second you, Martin. Go on. Can you read it out just so that I feel clarity? Yeah. Uh, so I'll just um, put in some answers, please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, e, the agrees that projects with a value of $3.21 million will be put forward uh, in the funding proposal. And uh, if agrees that further details on projects to be included will come to a future meeting for prioritization. That seems fine. Do you okay with that? So, yep, yeah, right, everyone's got that. It's pretty clear. Yeah. Okay. So we've, we've amended that. Thank you, mate. Yeah, so um, I moved it, Martin yeah, seconded it. Thank you very much. Right, all those in favour? All right. Against, that's carried. Thank you very much. So we now go back to our other agenda um, bunch of papers to page 295, the Alexandra Library Renovation Project. And I suspect this may be now simply receives the report and the level of significance. Nothing more. Hmm? Nothing more. Nothing more because it's going to be part of what we're going to be discussing. Yep. That work for everybody? If I move that, we just made. Well, it was always going to be part of what we were discussing anyway, no matter how we did it. Can mm -hmm. you see that? Yeah, can I actually? Sure, yes, so come up, Christina, sorry. Present the report. Yeah, yeah, please. We've got a bit of work done, and this is actually the information that sort of goes along with Julie's report. So this has actually got the information that you need to probably make a decision, potentially include this or not. So this is... Um, <laughs> Apologies, I'll just note that this is actually Councillor Jeffrey's part of the agenda. So I will shut up. <laughs> See, that wasn't going to happen, Steve. Through the chair, I'm going to be an interest, mainly because of the relationship I have with a staff member in that library. Uh, more likely, I uh, I give like a rash, but that one was for about long. <laughs> okay, the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> so the reason why I've sort of insisted a little bit to come down and talk to you because there's been a heck of a lot of work on behind us, and this is actually giving us quite significant part of our application um, potentially to the um, federal yeah. funding. So this could give you a really good idea and maybe this is the, hopefully, <laughs> um, this is the first one you go, hey look, this is great, let's put, confirm this part of the funding application. So it's already actually been taken to the Vincent Community Board 
and they were to find that the concept plan, um, that they were keen to go progress the concept plan through to the detailed design um, stage and the next stage um, with the funding short for of 611,500 to be um, made through an application to the three water better off funding support package. Um, when I looked at all the criteria and we were talking executive level and things like that, this actually ticks all those boxes and we've actually expanded the scope to include um, double glazing, for example, because it actually makes sense when you're shutting a library for a couple of months to actually get this work done as well. So it makes that extra um, better off um, support package. They also said that, hey, look, if this funding application wasn't successful, then let's pair it back and just go with the new carpet paint and um, the shelving units. But when we actually went through, and you'll see through the concept design on page 309, that we've actually incorporated a toilet inside the library. If many of you have been with small children um, to the library, <laughs> there is no toilet inside the Alexandra Library. You actually have to go outside and down Thompson Street to a public toilet. And that was really important and came through very strongly when we've consulted on this before, because this has been a project which has been in the wings for a long time. So to actually include a toilet into this building is quite tricky. And that's why we've had to engage an architect to help us achieve that. Also, another part of it is our staff feeding back that they'd really like a separate staff room. At the moment, I don't know whether any of you have been out the back, but it's pretty rudimentary. It's like a little um, a couple of cupboards down the end, and it's within their workspace, so they actually don't get a break um, properly. So this is actually shifting the, life, um, the staff room up to the mezzanine floor um, and incorporating that, getting a proper cleaners cupboard, getting some proper storage in there, um, but through this as well, we've also considered, look, if in the future the library moves for whatever reason, um, then we've left with a building that is good for a commercial tenant. So a commercial tenant would want an internal toilet anyway, would want a separate staff room, would want it nicely painted and things like that as well. And then the shelving can actually be moved to another premises as well. Um, so what I'm asking today is that the council actually does make a decision on this, if at all possible, to include it in the three, um, three waters better off support package and also gives the approval for us to continue on with this concept plan and go to detailed design, construction partner and get some construction quotes. Because at the moment, please do remember we're at concept design stage and as we move through, we get our prices refined, but we don't actually know the final cost of a project until the final invoices are, especially when we're dealing with a renovation of a building. So we've got a 30% contingency in here, and as we come down, we'll gradually come down um, through there. So that um, to continue on with the detailed design, I should also point out is 27,100. So we've got an architect in the rooms that can take us to the next step of fire reports and accessibility reports and air conditioning reports and things. So I'll go to going back to all the recommendations because there's another factor in here now that's coming back to us to sign off with that's where we want to spend some of that funding. Mm. If we're successful with the funding, I'm assuming we're all successful with the funding, but the third point we're talking about. Mm. So there is another, you know, that's how I, if I'm asking, that's yeah. how I see it is that if we've just decided that we're going to have a look at the overall list, I don't see how we can say, but mm. well, this one. Uh, and, and I'm not sure it will hold you up that much because if whatever the time frame is, and I'm anticipating it to be in the near future, we do get to work our way through that list. I don't think it needs to take any particular period of time. Then, then that would be when the button would get pushed if it's going to get pushed. But I can't see how we can say, we've got 3.2, we're going to divvy it up, we're going to work it out, we're going to go through the process apart from this one because we're not measuring all sorts of forces. We've got a very full report on this and a very good presentation on why we haven't got that on the other ones. That's just my opinion. I want to scale that version of that not as little as toilet. No, yeah. really significant part to get all that plumbing in. Also triggers the building consent process as well, which then means that we need to get our fire and accessibility up to scratch, up to the No matter what happens, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was just going to say, no matter what happens with the building going forward, I would have thought that was impressive. 
Yeah. The, the, the toilet double glazing ice box is a, a good practice to maintain our building and that investment in any case. And that's that's been built in and as Christina said, the the library components of it are also usable if that we need to decide in the future. Yeah. But the building would retain those those improvements that we've made. Also, when I was actually just talking to Louise. So Louise is here because the way that the project structured is she's actually the project sponsor. My manager, Gareth, is the project owner and I'm the project manager. So when talking with um, Louise just before, if you prioritise what she put forward for the libraries, the number one priority would be this one. Then it would come down to the RFID as being the second one and then the third one would be the shelves. So if you're just looking at what we've put or what Louise has put forward for the libraries, this is the number one to get this across the line. This has been sitting here since 2015 to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, I add to that question because um, there's been a number of good reasons why we've delayed doing anything to the library over the time that I've been here. Um, I know it's had a big impact on staff who work in the facility and how they feel about working there. Um, and that's something that, that use uh, that space as well. The project is underway. Um, we've been working through it for some time, so I guess if we halt things, there is a delay to the project that I guess has some, for lack of a better term, psychological costs for those people who are working there, but also <coughs> potentially financial costs in the current market that we should be alive to at the moment as well. <coughs> this, this, excuse me, the recommendations as I read, they don't necessarily co conflict with what we've just decided to do. No. I'll just get a quick word and then I think I think we could pass those recommendations without tying our hands. Because it's contingent on getting approval with that approval. Yeah, but what we're saying, if we get the approval for the 3.2, we've already committed 600 of it before we've ever. No, we're not. But that, that, I don't think that commits us to getting all that the same. If we're successful, if, if, then it on the condition the council is successful. In the application, well, that that application is not getting the 3.2 million. The, the the success is us deciding to to put it to the library. So yeah. I, I don't I don't see that that ties our hand at all. I think what Nigel's saying, if we had the workshop don't put it in, doesn't matter if we get the 3 million money or not, it's not in. Yeah. Well, what's the point in moving it now and, and giving false hope or lacking clarity? Well, I don't think it, it, it is what it is. We approve. We approve this concept, proceed with the concept plan dependent on getting 600 million. The, the yeah. only issue to that is if everyone was bad enough the same track, that will be contentious relative to the 3.8 million. And this was on the agenda before we made the decision that if four other items came on at $600,000, then your 3.6 they may not be the priority on the list. I guess well, in, in fairness to it, if we turn around and say we want something. We get the money and this council doesn't decide to allocate 600 million thousand to this thing, then they go to, to point D. No, I, I, I'm thinking, I think it's really clear in that and also really clear to the community board when they went through this that the approved this very mm. recommendation is that the the decision is made by Wound and not this room as to whether it's successful or not. So if, if, if we say yes to this now, we're taking $3.2 million and cutting 600000 of it before we have our discussion with anything else. And I just don't see the fairness in that. No, I've got, a, I've got a suggestion. Go on. Uh, um, so just writing it as I speak. Um, so you could change it to say that it agrees that if this project does not, this is bad grammar, is not approved by council as being included in the Three Waters Bureau support package, then follow on. Yeah. You're doing the work that needs to be done. Yeah. If this council doesn't agree that it gets funded from the three water support package, better off package, it doesn't happen under that process. So therefore, you've done all this work. It doesn't happen. No, no, no. You, no. You're good. Oh, I like where you're going. Yeah. yeah. That just clarifies it. Yeah. yeah. What's about council approving it? If we don't approve it at our workshop to go into the package. Yeah. But if we leave this line on the table until that workshop and then the meeting that we'll have to make the determinations afterwards. Staff just told me they can do no other work in the meantime. Is there any money to do the other work in the meantime? 
Yes, there's, I remember that this is a project that is already budgeted for. Yeah, yeah. We're asking for more. So I think what you're proposing is that we still go ahead with um, which one it is. C. And then reword B. Around, you know, or leaving it to lie on the table or something like that, but to go for us to go ahead. I guess my hesitation here is what sort of delay are we talking about? So <coughs> we're talking about we've got October is the election, so then you can't do your workshop till November. No, 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 no. I, I, I didn't see it that way. We, we go for the funding agreement and at the same time, we do the workshop. If the money doesn't come through, and I don't see why it wouldn't, then, okay, we've wasted our time, but I'd rather waste our time and keep things moving because I don't see how we'll be wasting our time. So the, the 3.2, the year is my understanding. It's going to, we put the projects up, they go, yeah, fine. Within these projects, we think they're all okay. Meanwhile, we've actually sorted out our back end, so to speak. And I think we can do that pretty lickety split and, and, and not, like I wasn't envisaging you're going to be waiting until next year before you want this. I was hoping a couple of months tops. So we do it alongside the, the, the application because we're, the application is going to be a gen, generic, but it's going to be such a broad application that we can still do the marquee within that in the time that that's been processed so that if we get the green light, which I anticipate we will, here we go. We've already decided the priority and, and that's when this would be sorted. Is, am, am I missing something in that? I, I, to be, and I, uh, I feel like there's a lot of way through we're talking about the same thing and using different language because we want to uh, get, get to a certain point. With this, I think there is a concern that this project is in train. I think we need Julie back in the room if we're going to say we prioritise projects before the funding application comes back. Um, that's not what I think we just agreed. Um, I know you talk differently, I think mm. you say that. Um, I, I, what I heard is we put in the funding agreement, we'll hear back on that, and then we would have the opportunity to prioritise the projects that sat under it. And I thought that probably went in that order. Um, so I think we need to understand from, from Julie. Does that even want to give him that balance? So that really, when we know whether we're successful in our funding application or not, is out of our control. That will happen when it happens. But all we can do is say, if we get approval, we can have it, we can be ready for a workshop. We have to. Oh, and it might be that we just have the workshop for, but I think yeah. we need to agree that um, with Julie in the room. Yeah. Like, yeah. The amount of oh, okay. that goes okay. into this is beyond phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. This, is, this is more of that on top of, uh, and it's a really big process. I think in, in the ideal world, what Julie was trying to say is it's prioritise a couple of things, keep the work going on, then we, and then we prioritise the rest after that. Um, I, I hear your unhappiness with that as a concept and you want to prioritise the whole list. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what you're saying you don't want this to get trumps or other things mm -hmm. that you haven't considered. So I, would, I actually would argue the other way that we should put it up and leave it the way it is. It's the building, no matter what happens in the future, some of this work is done. And is it a bad outcome? Because one, one we didn't get the double glaze until we get the toilet on there. Which is something that we ended up having to lease at some time in the future. Or the building gets refurbished for something else, we've had a win. So, just, just gonna, um, obviously, we're making these not decisions, decisions today, yeah. or right now. Uh, <laughs> just so that I'm clear for um, being a first time councillor, how does this go? For decision making in subsequent meetings prior to the elections, mm. or is this it today? No, we can make the the, the 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 best practice is not to make big decisions between within the election period that starts on July the 15th, because yeah. they can be influenced by good politics rather than good governance. Yeah, big decisions and new decisions. And new decisions. So that's what yeah. I'm trying to get at. Just yeah. is that going to be seen? Because it's 
it's not going to be sitting as big decision. Mm, that's just because it's, it's, because it's, it's kind of following on from what we've done today. We've said, up the stuff, you're not fine, I don't want to make it. We're flowing on with it, so I don't think the cruise okay. line was just cheap. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to go. Um, Julie's just coming in saying she's to bring her up to speed rather than try to get in front of the whole room. Uh, sorry, Stephen, I'll keep you in. It's like having money's the problem. Isn't it? <laughs> oh. You were usually worried. <laughs> having money's the problem. I don't think. I think it works. Well, the way I look at it, from my personal life, it's a win win. It's a win win. Yeah. So now we're saying well, we need to think about prioritising where we spend the food. And if you think about prioritising the, 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 the work streams from coming out of libraries, if yeah. this is their number one work stream, then you can potentially put the other two, you know, if you're looking at next your next level in your workshops, you can go, right, well, we've done a major project for the libraries, so we'll, we'll pop those down a bit further. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how I can pull off your as I pull it up six hundred thousand goes into the, a library in Alexandria. We still have one enclosure under the portable bridge. You go, we can't use some of this money for infrastructure in our corner until we go to rock your tail and get a subsidy. Yeah, well that's what So how are we gonna how am I gonna sell that to my people? Um, but generally that's not that. I can tell you that one of the things we asked the staff in Fish and Talent did when we were looking at the funding. We deliberately made sure there was work just coming across the district. Um, so while the one project we've got a lot of detail on is the Alexandra Library, there was a lot of work in most other programs, yeah. particularly the parks and property market that were right across the district. Um, and you have said we'll be able to do a workshop by us in August if we can do it. We would, that would be really good if we had one in August. Yeah, and I think Neil may have, sorry Stevenson, Neil may have provided the solution up on the screen. Oh, yeah. I just changed it so council had the control. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did. Yeah. It says what it says already, but actually changed from us approving it in the workshop we're going to have. We set the priorities that we can then go and formally resolve at a later date. Already budgeted for is that? Well, that budget, that money's been set aside for years. Yeah. What are you talking about? No, the last time we sort of made an upgrade budgeted for already. A bit of luck, I just cut and paste and just left a bit out. Yeah. No, that's what it, upgrade. Right, budget, that's what that's what currently says. Is it just me or do B and D conflict? They can they conflict. I mean, you're accept, you're approving the plan as you know what's presented. But you're not pro approving a plan on what on the uh, condition that something else is subsequent to it. It's a concept plan. And you, you, we, we love the plan. Like that's you know that's what we're saying. We love the plan and what you're putting forward to us. But we're not approving that a plan conditional on something else. What we're saying is that the D is you know we full agreed that if this project is done. Full stop up the plan. Delete the rest and B. That takes away any ambiguity about it. Yeah, right? I just feel that's way too. Let's see what Tracy's saying. After after plan. That's what I do. Yeah. Or as presented, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that actually works because you yeah. 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 As presented, so they can costs. I'm happy to move that, Stephen. But before doing so, I just don't, I don't want staff to think that this was negative in any way towards the plan. I think it's a bloody good yeah, thing. Yeah. I mean, it's an exciting thing to do. And if I've found it a bit that way, it's because I'm <laughs> bloody process driven and occasionally lose sight of the reality. But, but I, I think that covers it. That you know where it's off, you can still progress. We've heard very clearly through Louise that this is the number one of those three priorities of the library, and that's really good to get that clarity. Yeah. So I want you to leave with hope and not, not dismay, because I think you're, you're totally on the right track. You get the process right. We'll see where we land. Awesome. And the important thing is, is that we all relate that back to the staff. Absolutely. Yeah, I just think this is, we've got to have the process right, and particularly when there's government money coming in that's fairly contentious in the first place. Exactly. So, if you're happy looking for a new it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, I, st 
Is that the one you Yeah. Okay. Right. Sorry. My only concern is, and I just said it before, is that I, I think that even with our fist, if we don't get that funding, that's not a good outcome. To me, that's not a good outcome. So that's gross. Oh, but, there's, but, but there's scope then to come back and find uh -huh. money from somewhere else. It doesn't close the door. Does it not? No, it just uh -huh. says you go and do a cosmetic upgrade budget report, but staff can come back with us a report at any time and say, found some more money, going to come from here, going to give this up. <laughs> just gives, them a, gives the staff a clear program of what we're at the moment. With the current numbers we've got, that's the best we can do. Because okay. there's no more money. Or anything other than that, unless we get that other money. That's what I'm saying. So the concept plan has been designed, there's no more money if it doesn't work. Not necessarily. Well, you know, like it's, it's a bit like having the lettuce is ready to eat them, but perhaps it's a bit like So does that, are you clear that? <laughs> 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 well, you know, you've got to put it in the but you've got to, first of all, it's got to, that's the way I thought of it, two is two, you're right. Thank God I didn't hear what he said. So if the, that money doesn't come through from the water, we're happy for the staff to come back and see well, that's all, more money. That's all I've got so far. Unless yeah, we yeah. find some more money, they've got there's no, they've got no choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's not that budget there, but it's I only think you've to got go. a very good chance yeah. to run the money. That's yeah, yeah, if yeah. you choose what you spend it on, it's going to yeah. be a challenge to something. We had a mover. We're going to get stuck if we die. Yeah, Sorry. I'll move that. Have a second. Awesome. See you all in favour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda. Thanks, Tony. Quickly, more coffee to this one. Order, order, order. I want to go home sometime today. <laughs> I'm getting close to retirement, so I need to. Somebody getting a wheelchair, a lazy boy. Next item is 22.5.10, page 321, community leasing and licensing policy. And seeing that Mr. McKinley can have any speech before we start, I'm going to get on today. So, no, sorry, Alex. Welcome, sorry, I'm going to jump the gun. That's all right. Uh, yeah, from Maria, good afternoon. Um, we'll try to make up some more of the time because this is a relatively straightforward review on this one, I believe. Um, the community leasing and licensing policy became operational in February 2021. So it hit a year old just before, um, well, just earlier this year. It was in place just before I started. So I've got to do the one year review of the operation of the policy to look for any issues that we can start to resolve. Um, as a one year review, it's one year staff review, so we're not looking at fundamental changes, we're not looking to adjust the policy settings, we're just improving what we have. Uh, and the, the introduction of this policy was the introduction of a standardised system of fees for the first time. So that's the main area that we've looked at here. Um, prior to the policy, there was no one standard of fees. So when it came to putting that in, we looked at the subscription fees model. Um, that is calculated at 2.5% of a group's income minus any affiliation fees, which is applied as a percentage to ensure it remains relative to the group. In its practical application, it works, but the term subscription income is leading to some confusion. Um, the main issue there, or the main two issues, is in some cases groups will make an income that is more significant than others, but as they have no members, they technically have no subscriptions, so they're effectively exempt. And the other example is when we've had um, discussion with the groups, there's been a lot of confusion about what items do and don't fit into it. So a lot of staff time has been taken up in quite meaningless conversations about what should and shouldn't be. So we basically sought to improve that situation, simplify the definition and just call it income. It's not a fundamental change in that it achieves the intention of the original policy, but it is a change to the wording with that impact. The other thing that we have tweaked is the process for an adjacent landowner when they're seeking a license to occupy, and that's to simplify the process in a very small number of cases. 
where the expression of interest policy is causing complications with little to no benefit. We've discussed these changes with three of the four community boards. Apologies to Vincent, I had COVID, so we had to send a memo instead. And at that stage, there were generally a lot of support for these as tweaks, as long as they didn't result in unexpected and excessive charges to the community. And they wanted to ensure that the roles of the community boards didn't change. But following that round of workshops, we had items at both the Cromwell and Teviot boards under this policy that highlighted some potential unfairness in the policy settings that we really need to address. Um, the thing about policy is that it really needs to be an evolution rather than an end point, and this one in particular. So it's a young policy in a complex area that's introduced standardisation for the first time across some very different groups and arrangements. And there is a period of adjustment for these things, but as well as that, we need to separate the issues that don't resolve after that settling in period, and these are probably some of them. So after that round, we've added an extra clause into the policy to deal with the immediate issue, or the immediate issues being dealt with by these boards, but for future ones, we've put an exemption in for the specific exceptional circumstances so we can work through them, and we'll also keep reviewing the policy to keep on top of it. So, I'll hand back to you and then we can take any questions. Thank you. Yeah, before I take any questions, I'm just going to give you all of my view about what I've seen okay. as we go through the process as the, with the um, leasing and licensing review. The policy, as it is at the moment, one size doesn't fit all, and that's become quite evident when you come to a small community board like Roxburgh or to the other side. Policy needs additional weighting towards community wellbeing because sometimes when you're looking at the impact it's having on, on different clubs, you might get a perverse outcome, not what you intended with your policy. So that, that's a, another concern I have. If the policy is adopted, and I think you've kind of covered this, we need a little bit more flexibility at a community board level because they may choose some other way to offset policy as it stands. So if the, sign up, if the, if the policy was adopted today, the community board does need a little bit of flexibility to cover off. Maybe the lease, if there was an offset that they can implement themselves as a community board level. And I'm not talking about grants either, because we've got so limited, we've got a very limited amount of grants in the two and other and all that. So I have to say there's been some unintended consequences as well. For example, for me with the RSA lease that we had in the uh, Foxborough Information Centre, and more did that get the elected members into some hot water because the intent of the previous lease wasn't carried forward. Personally, it was kind of sacrosanct, so what we didn't go down that path. And uh, of course, that causes a lot of community angst, unfortunately. Questions? I agree with you. I think the decision making at community board level, especially the really small ones, it might be insignificant, but I mean, it, it just the feeling that I had to say. And as long as we do have that, because those elected members are pretty close to the community, so as long as it's broad enough that, you know, and I think that will happen with discussions with staff that have come to the board level, but there's some pretty small and dying groups and clubs and leases and that are really, you know, sure a one size fits all doesn't just get rid of them. That's only to get it for two and a half percent, it's insignificant. But just to have a club in some of those using the facilities is probably one of the biggest things. I totally agree with Stephen. Sorry. So just try to check golf courses, golf clubs are in court with this one, aren't they? Golf clubs weren't particularly happy with the previous one, were they? Because the affiliation fees or what was it? They had a view, I can't. They Sorry. wanted the affiliation fees to be brought in, so it's the 2.5% minus affiliation fees. It's my recollection of the notes, because I hadn't yeah. started this workshop, yeah, 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 but um, yeah. the notes are the reason why it's 2.5% yeah. minus affiliation fees, and that remains. So now it's income, so it puts up the green fees. Great, it already did. It already did? Yeah. And they were all happy with that. It specifies in the policy yeah, specifies. Yeah, so I'm just, just trying to make sure I have, we, that we, with the green fees are in or out, because if they weren't, weren't in yeah. previously and now they're in, um, yeah, they won't be. This change shouldn't make any difference yeah. to the golf clubs. Yeah. And then it picked up those organisations where some organisations paid large affiliation fees 
and maybe we should clean only five dollars. Yeah. You know, but they have to pay ninety five to the mothership. Thanks, Ben. Um, just under the fee determination, page five of the policy 329 uh, um, agenda, um, there's the subscription includes membership fees, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, such as um, and other income derived from the use of facilities, such as room or venue hire. Is it your anticipation that um, bar takings are included in that? Because a lot of clubs make a lot of their money off bar takings, and if it should either exclude or include it specifically in there, I think, because it's an important chunk of income to the clubs. So if I can speak to that, yeah. um, I um, thought that um, well actually it, it opens a much wider can of worms because in the past um, it had been determined, actually, when we changed from the Rating Powers Act 1998 to the Local Government um, Rating Act 2002, there had been a provision in the past for clubs to receive a um, discount um, uh, and be rated at 50% for all of their charges um, with the exception of course of services which are always rated in full. And um, up until uh, quite recently, um, it was generally understood that um, Council would turn a blind eye to um, organisations that uh, held bar licences and operated bars on the premises. And the reason for that is because it was understood that there were additional costs associated with operating those bars and with complying with the legislation or acts or having a manager, what maybe they had to pay somebody or that type of thing. And that actually some of those venues um, remained um, viable because they were hiring them out um, as venues which could be um, uh, to hire out to, for uh, private functions. Um, and so we have never included that in the past and we don't have that to include in the future. And what, um, what would be helpful going forward is that in the past, we had only ever referred to subscriptions and green fees. And that is pretty much how every um, club had been, um, um, had been lease assessed in some way. Um, so, thing about the um, the policy where they could get a 50% um, reduction on their rates is that we gave them that over the whole of the premise, whereas under the rating act you should technically apportion the rates out and you should charge in full for the portion of the property which is used as a bar where there is a, um, a revenue being generated by an alcohol license and that that should be rated um, commercially or however you would rate it any other of course, offer a, a, a not 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 as a club because it's not technically a club operation, even though it's a component of the club. And then you would rate the balance of it. So perhaps the, perhaps the bar was ten square meters, and maybe they had twenty hectares. So ten square meters of mm. it would be um, separated off and assessed uh, um, uh, under without a remission, and then you could apply the remission to the other half. Um, while we had turned a blind eye to that in the past, on the understanding. Um, we have changed that slightly recently and you cannot qualify for the remission to the same extent under the rating policy. Um, so we've never included the takings. There is a change um, that has occurred which um, could see the clubs actually paying a slightly higher in rates, but we've only ever said subscription and green fees. And the thing about subscriptions and green fees is that we know that um, golf clubs have them, bowling clubs have them, all of those people have them. But when you get down to some of these other clubs and community groups, they don't actually have subscriptions or memberships, but perhaps they're in control of a facility where they're renting that out and obtaining an income um, from that. And um, then council might also be responsible for maintaining the whole of that building. So effectively, they, we maintain it using our costs, but it's not funded by any form of um, return from tenanting or um, having that lease in place. So it, it, some of them actually make more money in an easier fashion to some of these um, clubs that have bars and um, that type of thing. So that's what we were trying to do when we tried to refer to it as income. And we are quite specific that um, the income is if you pay $100 to be a member of the club, but they pay $50 of that to the um, national body, then it is actually, if you've got 10 members, then we would assess you on it. 2.5% um, of the um, $500, not the overall income because we take off the affiliation fees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So, um, and so we don't look at um, charging against income that the club has made from something of their own. So right. if they had a donation or something that wasn't wasn't couldn't be classified as an income directly related to subscriptions, green fees, room or vendor hires. Um, and it also makes a difference if the club owns their own building or not, um, because some of them own their own building and only have a, a ground lease. So yeah. there's a, quite a few components so, that have so, to be considered each time. So my point being, and you, you mentioned conciseness, not conciseness, um, but being clear, I think if we're not charging, taking card for bar facilities, that should be in there because that's what I'm saying. And it should say something in the policy. I'm going to go one step further and say not just bar. I think you've got to look at these things. They actually have a, a club license under the um, sale of alcohol. It's, it's a different little commercial one. Um, so I would say it's probably more important to say restrict it from income from their own members. Yes. Because at the end of the day, um, technically mm -hmm. under a club license, you need to be a member of that club. Yeah, right. Yes. So I think that will make it rather than just Go and go bar like bar bar yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have it, um, it's member derived income. Yes. And, and another example of that, which we used when we were discussing it, is that if you take, for example, um, ice and lime, ice and lime, you pay to go there and skate. So your um, that's that's your subscription or your entry fee or your whatever, and you might hire skates. Council has no interest in skates. And therefore, we would not be looking at that. So yeah. it is, it is, yeah. It's, you it's, don't care about the meat raffle either. No, we don't care about the meat raffle either. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's more than just bar tokens. Um, yes. I think it is. I think I think the member derived income is the right term because that's that's like yes. affiliation fee. Yes. Um, other, so member derived income other than subscriptions. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's yes. right. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. 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 Oh, all right. Okay. That was one. Um, sorry. <laughs> Under tenure framework on the next page, we say. Um, Council reserves the right to terminate six months' notice and it requires part of the whole of the occupied area for other activities. Other activities is really broad, and the one that sprang to mind is when you've got a 10 year lease and I won't name names, and you've got a club that's down to a half a dozen members is using a, a pit of land that other club or organisation wanted. Do those other, can, can we go in and say, actually, your, your membership shrunk? Nobody, nobody's really into hula hooping anymore. Uh, the skateboard club wants it, you know, because, yes. because trends change. Can I say then, if we um, roll back to 2019, when we reviewed, for example, the Dunstan Golf Club's lease, yeah. um, almost, um, <laughs> they went from uh, occupying or having a lease over um, perhaps it's 28 hectares of um, recreation reserve, and they were very clearly only using, um, I think it was 26 hectares yeah. of that. So they had a right to occupy a, um, an, an additional two hectares of land, which wasn't required for golf course or being used for golf course purposes. And the Reserve Act is quite specific in that you cannot hold a right over um, reserve land, which you do not actually, or are not using for the purpose for which that right is granted. And if the um, right of council is greater and determined to be greater, if, for example, hula hooping is out and I don't know, some in. Yeah, <laughs> um, then it, it, it's that. But of course, if we did get a hula hoop class, we would, uh, uh, group, yeah. we would hope that we could find them an alternate space right. somewhere else that was actually appropriate to the size of the club cool. at that time. Thank you, just for my understanding. The final one, I promise, um, is, is, is page eight of the report. We talk about um, what happens when the agreement is expired. Yeah. And we say the buildings and structures owned by the tenant may be removed by the tenant. I'm just wondering if that's, Shouldn't I say must? Because they may not want it, because the six hula hoopers may not want the, the around oh, 250 see. square metre tin sheet. Yeah. Um, perfect. Thank yes. Yep, right. That makes perfect up sense. a little yeah. bit originally, yeah. it could automatically transfer to council ownership, yeah. and yeah. that's an error we've just added. Yes, yeah. so or must. No, that makes that sense. Thank you. Yes. And, and for example, the men's shed, if you think they're going to build their new building and um, if they decided in 10 years they weren't going to perhaps be um, any more men's shedding and they wanted to um, fold or um, they may sell their building and have it removed to someone else or perhaps sell it to another entity um, who might take it over and then take over the lease or something. But we have no interest in that building. We didn't pay for it. We've simply given them a site. So that's there's just it's just for lots of little bits. Thanks. Yeah, I
So we have recommendations. So if we go to the recommendations, it means that we're not reviewing the current status of the, the policy. Did we want to just change that wording that Neil had and we can just say uh, add um is amended? Um yeah. <coughs> Um, have a, uh, adopts the revised community and licensing policy subject to the addition of clarification that member derived income other than subscriptions will not be assessed as income. That's okay. 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 We can do that under this. Yeah, does that sound? Can I also just clarify the, the comments around um, community boards at that flexibility? Are you happy with, um, with the next next iteration that, that we work? away on that and we come back to community boards and have a conversation further with community boards around what that looks like, how it would work with the national policy. Because I mean you need to in some small areas and some smaller clubs, you probably need to consider community wellbeing and all about yeah. you know if we went too far down that track and we tip them up, what are we left for? That's right. Yeah. Oh, I think that's what because there's some clubs that have just they may not even be here if it's too hard and they come under and we've got to have, and, and we are the right people to tell you how they're functioning because they'll probably come and talk to us over and over and over again. We'll need, and they'll come usually through our grants policy or through grants just to keep them there. So, I think that's yeah, actually fair. We've had, we, we have talked and consulted on this, and we probably have missed a few things. And it's not until at some point that you realise, well, we really saw that one coming. And I think that's going to happen for a few years to come because it's such a complex area. It's, it's young, but I really like that phrase weighting of community wellbeing. So we'll build that in. Okay. We'll get it where it needs to be. Sorry. Um, can I share? There's just there's an issue with Omicow currently with the Omicow RSA being charged $60 for haul hire for their Lanzac Day services. And in the past, that's been remitted. On the advice of the chair, which is a community board, but there's no policy wrapped around that. I think this is extending what Stephen's talking about. The response when staff were queried about was that they need to go through the grant process to get that $60 remitted. Now, our grants process, as you well know, is pretty fractious at the best of times. And there's nothing, is there anything in this policy which allows us to remit those fees for events like? Or high for ANZAC Day, which is you really don't want to be charging a community group for that. Thank you. Can I yeah. perhaps throw a little a spanner in all of that? Um, when we changed from the Rating Powers Act 1998 to the Local Government Rating Act 2002, Council passed a resolution which um, ensured that St John and fire brigades and um, Masonic lodges and I have to go back to rates and that's yeah. quite a long time ago now. Um, and we par par a resolution was passed whereby, even though they did not qualify for a remission under the rating or any other policy that we held at that time, that they would be granted a 50% remission and treated effectively the same as a club under the new um, uh, rating act. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody here remembers that. I have tried to find that piece of information. Um, and uh, I have it on very, very good authority um, that that is the case and that that is why those, uh, those um, remissions are in place. So perhaps there could be um, some consideration given to particular um, groups or clubs such as um, RSAs where you might want to try and work some form of um, they're on the list that they're treated differently. Yep. There are certain um, people, and I was at your TV at Valley meeting, and the RSA were very upset. Um, yep. And it, yeah, so it's that type of thing where they could be a component being so treated yeah, differently. Yeah. Additionally, to that, when we reviewed the grants policy, you might recall we did it in two parts. So we passed what we could do immediately, and then we benched a bunch for the LPP discussion that included some of those longer term grants, and one that came from the money total at the time was some scope for the board to be able to waive all fees in the case of funerals. So it's actually on our program for discussion when we put that review back up. I, I, in, the past, it's, in the past, I've been approached by 
um, as the chair of the VCB, might not be an example. The um, local um, youth group here in Alex run a um, job search program for um, young people every seven years. In the past, they've got the community centre for nothing. So, the right, but there's no, there's no mechanism within either this or our grants policy which covers that. It's just um, somebody's just basically hasn't sent them in the invoice last year, you know? I don't know if they have been catching them. So they would have been charged in accordance with these things. Yes, yes. Charged 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 Actual fees and charges time if you want to identify. We need groups coming all the time saying you can have a group building consent, you can have this, can have that, and it shouldn't sit with staff. And that is why the council made that decision. So you cannot just one if you want to do that. I'm not sure where the, where the flexibility has happened, but I would say that's an important Yeah, there is. Oh, it's, it certainly has been informed. Um, and I'm well aware of that, but you know, okay, so this is, I'm sorry, I shouldn't, you know, just mission with, I thought, shut up, man. Thanks, man. So, Jeff, someone's going to be looking at it. Through all of these processes, whether it's the grants process, the leasing and license and policy, fees and charges, they all come to this table, and this is a, a, principal, a principal position that you will take. Um, that isn't about trying to find a way for everyone to get everything, but you say this is, feels fair and equitable. And then your job, as well as ours, as we come through, is to test it against certain scenarios that we know exist. Um, and, and inevitably, and this policy is a really good example, as you apply it, those examples that you didn't think of start to come out of the woodwork and yeah. And I think that's to Alex's point. This is the young policy, we'll keep coming back to it. Yeah. But it's the same with all those things. So, you know, when, when fees and charges come back and it's regularly, um, then, then you have a chance that does does that work for this in this in this. These and charges don't need to come through into the council. These and charges don't have to wait for an you to be given to you every year. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's probably not hard to put in there something that rebates or lesser fees can be charged with approval of whoever in your schedule. So you yeah. can scope. That's how you fix it. If you're allowed to. And, and again, in doing that, you want to know what does that mean for everybody? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because you try to also avoid perverse yeah. outcomes. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we had some. Anyway, <laughs> no fault of yours, ladies. So, um, subject to the amendment, so um, adopted by the community uh, This is mostly for the subject to the issue that the paper page of that amendment derived from that Alison's subscription that will not be assessed as thanks. So, do we have a move subject to the amendments? Anna, second up. Sure. <laughs> right, sure, it was. So, all those in favour? No. No. Against? Carried. Thank you. That's the Thank you, Stephen. Moving us on to the New Zealand Investment Strategy Report, which is at page 339, same 10. Who was yours? So this one here says of an unusual for a report that the background is several pages long, but the portion for decision making is relatively short. Um, the reason for that is we were really conscious that we've had a series of workshops and an ILM and a huge amount of work going through over the last year that was all in closed workshop. So we really took the opportunity to get some of that on the record just so we can make a bit of an update to the public as to where we're at and where we're going. Um, I'm not going to go through all of those multiple pages. So I believe the really salient points to note are that as a council, you continually emphasise the importance of working with the network and ensuring the community developed and owned centralised Hargo Museum strategy is central. That that strategy emphasised a network 
model with an autonomous decision making with each museum, but one centralized story um, and a point of organization and collaboration, which is where we've led to the establishment of the Central Otago Museums Trust in your role. When we speak about this investment strategy, we're looking really long term, far beyond the life of that strategy. So we're trying to look at the role of museums in around 2072. And in that context, we set museums continue to be relevant as our first and most important point. And there's two parts to that. The museums need to exist and have the ability to function, and they need to be relevant to the community that they operate. What's also really crucial to note is that the challenges that are facing museums, not only locally, but nationally and internationally, are complex in nature and require complex solutions rather than the continued, fund, continued funding of the older models. And we need to acknowledge that there's a national funding challenge. We spent quite a bit of time discussing it at the third workshop. <laughs> and though there is a really, really clear support and a strong willingness from Council to support our museum network, with our small ratepayer base and the pressures on the funding, there is a gap that exists there. So the challenge is to focus on what we can do, not on what we can't, and how we will get the best outcomes for the investment that we do make. Now, we talked about how we invest as opposed to what we invest and the opportunities from putting museums into that wider context. And that was breaking down to buildings, collections, operations and administration. And that's the point that we started to discuss if we were to fund this with a district funding model. And that is our request in front of you today is to formalise where we ended at the last workshop with a request to undertake financial modelling to be to fully understand the implications of the current model, what a digitised model would look like, what this would mean for our strategic assets, and then we can make a really clear decision on the next step with that data in front of us. Cool. Finance councillors. Just like that comment, I think yeah, that is the logical way forward. We've, we've identified all the wants and needs, but at no stage has there been a dollar put against it. And it's very hard to make decisions. You can get very emotive about these things, but if you don't know what the dollar value is, you, you so we need that's critical to make any any further decisions. So I support the recommendations. I'm happy to move us. Hey, you see it. Look at the closest thing to a museum piece we've got. I'll see it. Good. <laughs> He's, you've taken the ages to to lock me up. It was um, so it was so obvious what he was going to do, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you can read a live book. Oh, sorry. Just just before <laughs> now we have a mover and a second. Um, I just um, I'm, I'm hmm, I want to comment on the line on page three three six to. For a head of population, we're at the higher end of investment by council and museums per head of population. Um, that goes against what I've heard so many times that it's become the established truth. That some some claim that we are the lowest. And of course, the more times you say something, the more true it becomes. That's the way in 2022. So it's nice to actually see what science we can put behind it to show that that's actually a fallacy and that we do invest very well in our museums. And the other thing I want to say, well, I remember because I may forget the government's report that it was a really good report from the Central Otago Museums Trust. Mm -hmm. quite that right. yeah, yeah. They're doing a good job and I'm really pleased with where that's submitted <laughs> moving in that direction, which does good cause some angst. I reckon we have proven that we went the right way. So any further discussion team? All those in favour? Okay. Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you very much. Excellent. <laughs> right, thank goodness we got the hard stuff out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're only seven minutes behind now, I don't know how you did that. Eh? You're only seven minutes behind now, you're almost an hour before for doing it. You get a technical problem on the computer, especially half an hour of Jenkins. It keeps coming up. It keeps coming up. Well, I know. It's not a technical technical problem. It's supposed to be 10.35 now. Yeah, it's got rid of it. Oh, yeah, sorry, I was reading the wrong one. My apologies. Yeah, no, we're not. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, sorry. Right, no, thank you, team. The affordable housing survey results. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'll take the paper as read. 
Before I make um, a few comments, I'd just like to introduce um, June to a few of those that you um, don't know here. So June has been um, our magic behind the scenes, um, designed the survey that actually um, went on the platform, has done all the analysis. And what we provided you today in the paper was that really that the key results. There are a couple of quite interesting board differences and June very shortly is just going to pop those up on the, the screen um, for your information. Um, so as requested, um, we have um, had a survey with the community um, around the request from the Digital Housing Trust to, to give land. We've had, um, I think in a world where there's a lot of surveys going on, I think um, a very strong um, response. So all up um, 480 responses, 478 of those were on the online platform plus two letters received. Um, critically to the, the two key questions. Um, you'll note from the paper, and I, I won't um, go over in, in great detail, it's pretty um, straightforward, but overall very favourable um, responses, in particular to the key question around gifting the land to the trust. 57% uh, of our respondents um, were in support. Um, I think a really interesting thing with the data as well, as noted earlier by Glenn, this is irrespective of whether or not you um, own a home or not. In fact, 73% of our, of our respondents own their own home. Um, and that, I think, is, is really important to note that um, there was support even for those that won't directly um, benefit um, from this proposal that goes ahead. Um, we also had a really good age spread, um, and you'll note from the data there, um, generally the younger, younger age groups were more supportive than the older ones, but in the older age groups also um, support for the proposal. So I'm just going to hand it over to Jen to go through those um, interesting board results and then I'll just make a couple of um, very brief final comments and then open the questions. Okay, so just as a um, just a very quick over overview of the um, the numbers that we received for um, the Cromwell Ward and the Vincent Ward, we had 260 responses from Cromwell and 169 responses from Vincent. Um, I haven't looked further into Manitoto or Tibiet because we did have a very small small responses from those two wards, understandably. Um, so the following graphs are just going are just a breakdown of the results to the two key questions in the consultation by ward. The first being, do you agree to council supporting the development of affordable housing in Central Otago? And uh, do you agree with council contributing land to the Central Otago Affordable Housing Trust to establish a secure homes model? So we had 77% of the 260 uh, responses from those in Cromwell agreeing to support the development of affordable housing and 72% of the 169 from Vincent also agreeing. And this is in line with the 75% of overall, overall results. So when we look at the results to this question by age bracket, um, in Cromwell Ward, there is uh, strong support for council supporting development for affordable housing. In the younger age bracket um, groups, as Sasuke mentioned, the 20 to 29, 30 to 39, and 40 to 49 in particular, uh, there was proportionately um, slightly more respondents in the older age groups that, that did not agree, but overall, um, it is uh, positive. Uh, Vincent has support from all age groups, um, with the, the exception of those aged 60 to 69, which is where slightly more respondents did not agree um, compared to those who, who do agree, but um, it is a positive. Um, results by living situation uh, in both Cromwell and Vincent. Um, of those who live in their own home in the district, 68% uh, and 69% respectively are in support, and almost all of those who are in a rental property um, in the district who responded are um, also in support. 
Uh, so now we'll look at the results um, to the, the other question. Do you agree with council contributing land to the Ciclotago Affordable Housing Trust? 71% um, of Cromwell respondents uh, do agree, and just slightly fewer in the Vincent Ward um, with 59% in support. And then again, looking at this by age bracket, um, respondents in the younger age brackets, uh, 20 to 29, the 30 to 39 and 40 to 49 predominantly agree. Um, this changes into the older range groups again, um, with more respondents uh, not agreeing. Um, our 70 plus group in the Cromwell Ward um, so sort of tip the table there with slightly more disagreeing um, than here. Um, slightly different picture in Vincent uh, with proportionately more respondents in the 40 to 49 and 50 to 59 uh, not agreeing. Um, and in the 60 to 69 age group, more respondents disagree than agree. But again, we have got pretty even, even balance today. Uh, and Results by living situation in both uh, Cromwell and Vincent. Uh, the majority of those living in their own homes do agree with council contributing land. Uh, however, when compared to the results of the previous question, proportionately more of these respondents disagree, particularly in Vincent. So those who own their own homes seem to be more supportive of council's involvement in affordable housing and just slightly less supportive um, of the contribution of land. That's the general breakdown. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Jen. A um, couple of very fun points for me. Um, you'll note for your paper that if the decision was to proceed, we have recommended the process be the next LTP. Uh, the decision to uh, gift land is of such a level um, and financial modelling required that at the very minimum it would be an amended LTP. So if you wanted to go sooner um, next year, um, that would be the process, um, and you're probably all aware there's, there's quite a cost to the organisation. And as you've heard at this table before around the, the workload of staff, etc., that, that it is obviously an option to be considered, but we don't recommend it. Um, and the, the final thing is the 2024 LTP would give us time to work through the finer details with the trust, such as the criteria that was um, raised this morning, and also things like the number of houses. We've heard from Glenn this morning, I've seen the number he mentioned was um, 47 homes for the third of the year of the state. Uh, the plan adopted by uh, the Cromwell Community Board and Council um, has provision for up to 30 to 35 homes, depending on the final typology. Um, so what's been uh, modelled by the trust is, is quite a bit more than the plan already approved. So there's, there's quite a few details to, to work through and that timing would enable um, staff to, to work with the trust to, to iron that out. Um, so Excellent. That's, Thanks. That's that's awesome. Any questions? Jen, um, I'll come to Martin, then I'll come to Neil, but first I just want to make some comments of my own. Um, this, as Saskia said, this has been a high level consultation, so I'm not entirely sure that um, recommendation C is going to be appropriate. It might capture it a bit too much, but we can come to that. So we do have to come back to an LTP or an amended LTP. So essentially we have a binary question in front of us today because the you know the, the, the fact that people want us to do something, well that's fine. We know that. But whether we go ahead with looking at lifting land or not, that's the binary question. And if we say no to that today, that's going to, in my firm belief, and that comes from discussions, we'll call the Affordable Housing Trust. We need to have that in our mind. If we say yes, it moves it to the LTP. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It moves it to a much more detailed, far, far more detailed, what, what the effect's going to be on rates, what the effect's going to be. There's no way we can say that today would move us towards this inevitably happening. But a no will move it to inevitably not happen. So we need to be clear on what we're actually discussing today. Um, just to add a couple of points, I, I go to the business breakfasts all around the district. Um, I was at Cromwell today, and the constant theme was can't get staff, can't get staff, can't get staff. So while some people might not think we've got an affordable housing problem, we've got a staff problem, and it's the same thing. Um, I think the question is whether that's council's job to fix it or not. Uh, one person, uh, um, God, what's her name? A, an employment consultant today, Cromwell, said she's got 20 businesses looking for roughly six temp workers each. Where are they going to live? 
And the other thing I just want to keep in our mind and way in the distance is what the future for local government may mean for us. By the time we get to the next LTP, that may mean that we have more say in the housing or there may be other factors in there and whether or not it would be kind of handy to have the Affordable Housing Trust still in existence at that stage. Martin, then Neil, and then anybody else after that? Just a couple. No, I'm just the relatively low numbers put across the district. It's a percentage wise, it's very small. Yes, that lucky thing. I think very small might be going a bit far. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. And then just just remind me, were the financial ramifications in the consultation document? Were people told that if we go ahead with this, it's expect a 2.5 percent year on um, year rate increase? For the next 25 years, they no. weren't with her. No, it's it. and I always think that. I mean, again, going back to what we discussed earlier, when you put a dollar figure next to something, yes, on the surface, the whole idea of affordable housing, you'd be, uh, you'd be a very nasty type of person to say it's not a good idea, right? But then affordable housing is going to cost you an extra two and a half percent on your rates for the next 25 years. Maybe cloud your thinking and make you start getting a little bit more selfish. So, um, the other two comments I'd make. Um, yeah. Thank you. Neil. I'm going to start with the same boat as Martin and saying that 478 responses, I think, so I've got, and, and they go, yeah, what is uh, what, what percentage of that is of the sort of people that we expect to respond? And I knew you'd say what you'd say to it because it's bigger than the um, LTP consultation. But actually, it's it's not the same as the level of consultation. The questions weren't quite so detailed. The true financial implications aren't exactly that obvious. Um, there's a whole lot more work to be done, and I, I know you didn't mean it in anything other than the fact that it is more than that, is it, at a number. Um, the question for me is: Is it enough to say it's worth going to the next step of doing the work for an LTP? And the answer, in my view, of that, unless I hear something different around this table, is that yes, it is. But it's, is it, is it, is it, can we turn around and say as a council that we're going to endorse the proposal to give land to the trust at this stage? No. I think we can um, note that, that this is, gives enough confidence to go to that next level of putting it through an LTP process. Because I don't care what you say, the dollars we're talking about are not insignificant That's to huge. what this community is facing going forward. And you just can't make a decision today based on um, a really good survey that gave us a good steer. You know, if it had been slightly the other way, then we're flying the dead horse, there's no point going there. Um, but I want to know where were the 20 to 29 year olds in Vincent? We're not going there. Oh, well, yeah, 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 I think that borrowing the 8 million and the 2.2 to 2.5% rates increase in the current financial climate can't be ignored. I think that the secure homes model, exceptional example of something working really well in Kingstown that is not, not applicable here. We don't have any access to any government contributions like they did. We don't have any access to developer contributions like they have. And there is no ability to grow the model beyond us gifting land at this current climate. And according to Louise. At no time in the foreseeable future will that inclusionary zoning be applicable to within our region. And I also had a look at the Kaying Aura website because there were a lot of comments and some of that feedback around this is a job for central government. Central government do have a role in this and Aura First Home will put in up to $200,000 for people to first home and their maximum income that they can have is $130,000 for a household. So two people on 65 grand a year each is probably pretty accurate. Yeah, and that is the ability for them to have a shared home ownership partnership with central government, which was the idea of it. So I think there is a space for us in this area. I think that it is gifting land in the Garrett. Anybody else? Yeah, thanks, uh, Tim. I felt the survey did not ask a key, a key question, which is really echoes what Martin and Neil have said. In the view, for example, it's asked, do you want some of your rates every year, as well as $16 million of ratepayers' money to be spent to subsidise some people to buy the first home? Because that's the key question relating the cost to the ratepayer. Uh, 
to subsidize people into housing, you might have got a different answer. So I everyone agrees that housing is a good thing. It's just an emotional trigger. But I don't think it is the council's job to pay God and select a few children people to be given a subsidy. Our course spending on infrastructure, which is water, is under immense pressure. Our proposed rates rises were nearly 8%. Um, and these times spending money on nice to have instead on core services is not the right thing to be doing. I think the agenda report lacks information we need to make we need to be able to make an informed decision. Costs of setting up and running a trust to administer an affordable housing scheme and where those costs would lie have not been given. The size of the proposed scheme, the number of houses is not. Queenstown model relies on contributions from developers and has an expanding property portfolio. CODC would be incurring the running costs of administering a small scheme, or if one removes the, the trust set up to, with no possibility of increasing its portfolio. That doesn't make sense. What may work in Queenstown is not suitable for Central Otago. And the report notes is that um, Saski said on page 345 that there are major financial implications to gifting land that can't be dealt with till the 224-34. So we are being asked today to, to vote today on a proposal where we don't know the running costs, don't know the impact on financial or debt levels or on other capital projects. And we, we won't be dealing with these issues until 2024. I hesitate to say, but I think the consultation and the process has been rushed. But the, the, these significant issues have not been covered. Cromwell has a scheme, the new development stage two, that will deliver affordable housing by offering a range of different homes, duplexes, and apartments. It will do so without using subsidies or picking winners, and it is scalable. Rather than breaking up that model by going down the trust path, deeding land, would we not be better to get here Avenue to market, it is ready to go now, and test this me method of delivering affordability. We will then have the answer to that question by 2024 and be in a much position to make informed decisions on other alternatives. So I'm struggling to support the endorse the proposal to gift land. Thank you, Nigel. Others. Can I speak? Yes, absolutely. Of course you can speak. Um, I agree with everybody that just wanted to say that I think there is a rate payer subsidy for very few people. Um, and 16 million is uh, of future revenue. The housing, uh, I think housing is the government, not a local government. That's why they have a ministry legal program. Uh, very few people will benefit, and the criteria which we have today um, is, as to how people qualify. The policy priorities are taken away from, despite it being right. Um, I was disappointed the, that I, when I read the bulletin, the questions that we had agreed to published that it was. Um, that you were asked to take part in. I was also disappointed that it was dated the 2nd of the final date submissions was the 5th, giving three days. Um, so I felt that, like Nigel, was rushed. Gear Estate um, Stage 2 has the ability to offer um, different types of housing. And I think that um, it's a shame that we don't just carry on and um, with the with the gear state as it is, um, the potential to have uh, some dollars to put it back into our community, the church community, not necessarily. So to think that um, I can't support it. However, if the, the next place for it to go to is the, but that's as good as I'll, 
Okay. Okay. Supporters charging. Lindley. Can you hear me? I'd, I'd just like to say that the small amount of food, for example, that Sandra has, I think we could use to have a advantage to help more ratepayers than the small amount of homes that the affordable housing policy could provide. That, that's my opinion. All right, anybody else? We haven't heard from everybody, but we're just about there. Hmm. Um, oh, well, that's to figure it's just to Vincent and Cromwell for us, the consultation is there. But um, yeah, I'll get the same sort of picture. I think it's a government issue for what we have. Very big for us. And I wouldn't be supporting it. What I'd like to see is that um, Council. Sorry. So no, Tracy, then Stephen, sorry. I'd like to see uh, Council continue to come up with um, ideas and ways forward for um, developers to be able to get into that space. Um, so that's when we think about supporting affordable housing, that's where I'd like to see Council's role. I don't know how that works. That's for much clearer people than myself. Um, but that kind of space would be really exciting for our councils to work in. Um, so we provide mechanisms for developers to do more of that. Um, I agree with the sentiments around the table. There's no way that I'm prepared to support uh, something that I, that I don't think actually the community actually really truly understands the financial implications. And just to go one step further, I have had um, some disgruntled residents say to me, um, and in particular, it's in Omicel, and they said, how come, you know, we're talking about giving land away. I've got land I want to develop, and I'm not allowed to because the infrastructure is not there. So why are we giving away land that could, could, could pay for infrastructure? And I will do the... Uh, so that's how people feel in my community. So I just want to pass that on. Yeah, I agree with what said as well. But I don't, personally, I don't believe it's our role to be in that space. Single government should be in that space and that at the moment I think that the large cause of why the house price is actually going up all the time because of monopolies that supply the materials in New Zealand. And how come in a country like New Zealand we've got plenty of everything that the cost of building houses is outside of the monopolies compared to other OECD countries with very high. It doesn't make any sense. So I don't think we can solve that. Thanks, Kevin. Dean, I think you're the only one you haven't heard from. Yeah, uh, I'm in favour of council obtaining um, in looking at options like what's happening at year um, stage two. Uh, I think I can see where things are going. I'm going to um, amend C, put it up um, with a view to how it might result. Um, Lindley, it may be easiest for you to put a thumbs up or a thumbs down through to Wayne, um, perhaps rather than, because I'm going to ask for a show of hands. Um, what I'm going to do is have A and B as it is, and I'll be moving C, agrees to, and I'm changing it, agrees to consult on a proposal to gift land to the Affordable Housing Trust to set up a secure homes model in Central Otago through to the next LTP or amended LTP. So I'm going to move that, seek a seconder, um, and then we can take a vote on it. The vote for it means we've progressed to the LTP. The vote against it means that we've accepted the report. We accept the community's view that we have a role in housing, and that's that, which I think. A bit slower. So just before I say that again, so what that with this this is hearing room, the easiest way to clarify what the room's saying. But so agrees to consult on a proposal to gift land to the Central Otago Affordable Housing Trust. Model in Central Otago. <coughs> LTP or amended LTP. I'll move that. Can I have a second it? Well, I'll second it. Thank you, Neil. Just put that and read it. Yeah. It's just, it's just basically reading. taking it away from endorsing to saying that it will go through to the next LTP. So a lot of what I'm hearing about the consultation recognises that this consultation is very high level, which was what we asked for and what it had to be. And this doesn't commit us to anything other than doing the consultation fully, properly, getting the details out to the public and saying this is really what it's going to cost you. 
are you sure you want to do it? So, but it does limit us to a secure yeah. homes model. Uh, no. yeah, well, yeah, it does. We're going to consult on a proposal. We're going to consult on a proposal to do that. Yeah, so it's not just the committers. We consult on it and you chuck it out. Yeah. That's, that's the whole thing about this. Is in Nigel's words in particular got me when he said, there's this, 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 this and that. And he's right. There is all those things. He's not wrong. Um, but if you if we take it this level here and say, well, there's enough here to say, now let's see the rubber hit the road and answer those questions through a, a, a proposal that goes for pro proper consultation, probably that's the wrong word, um, more Prop. extensive and formal consultation with the community. So this is what this really, really means. And then 478 submissions might become 4,280, and I really hope it does. It tells us what the community really, really wants, having the entire picture with uh, the questions that Nigel pointed out. Because if you don't do that, we're just taking a wild punt. And it wouldn't be anonymous. Not so well, I don't care about the anonymity at all, but you know, I, don't, I don't really care about that. But I think it's the only true way, in my view, of actually truly finding out whether we're in the right space or not. And we don't have the luxury, if it was a luxury, that Queenstown had, where they were able to do it through developments and, and, and get the land that way. They, they put nothing into it. That's probably a bit of a stretch, but so it all the what we This have implications for stage two of year now, though? No, that life goes on with so, the gear out there as well. This doesn't hold up gear out. No, 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 Dunstan Park on stage four, Dunstan Park. The Western probably best was gone there. Uh, the, the Cromwell Community Board um, made a resolution at their last meeting that um, if the council make a position on affordable housing, then they would give effect to it um, because the development stage. Well, the rest and leave that bit till this is more sort of. Well, no, 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 no decision being made at this table. Right. That affects what's happens in here. And but the resolution that's been proposed here doesn't stop that. And, and uh, but this would stop that. So this is a timing yeah. thing. If right. the Cromwell Community Board push through all of their stages before this, before the LTP consultation and decision, mm. then gear abs out, and you're only talking about Vincent. But they would do that with this in mind. Well, they may, they I, may not take. Bear, bear in mind, also the council can stop. The Cromwell Community Board at any stage it chooses. Mm. So, yep. so that that's a really important thing. Life goes on. Who knows what that market's doing out there? The, the board has yet to come to a decision about how it might um, dispose of the rest of that land, and who knows what the development, who's the developer, all those sort of things that are probably going to need some council approval. Council gets a crack. Mm. I, I know that I'm going to move it yet. But yes, it has. It's moved by me and seconded by now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm struggling to support that because I, I don't think it does interpret the mood of the, of the council correctly. I, the overriding sentiment I heard was that it's, it's a central government issue that we shouldn't be uh, gifting land for affordable housing. That, that, that there may be an appetite to, to try and do things with affordable housing other than by gifting land. I, I, I don't believe it's Cromwell Community Board has spent several hundred thousand dollars getting Gear Avenue stage two to where it is. The idea that you would sit on it or, or break that model up for the next, waiting for the next two years in the LTP 2434 just doesn't make sense to me. That's not being proposed here. No, no, no that's my point. So, so yeah, sorry, sorry. So, I would have thought the expectation is that the Cromwell Community Board would proceed to press the, the go button on State of Gear Avenue Stage 2 within the next six months because it's just sitting there waiting to go. Um, we've spent all the money, we've done all the planning, and and so I don't know what's I don't know what's to, whereabouts Dunstan Park Stage 4 is at, but you're proposing this motion proposes something for the LTP where there's the could well be no land available to even talk about putting up, giving away to a trust. So be it. Yeah, so so yeah, I'm right. that if the area goes anyway, regardless of the next stage goes if this, if this passes, it'll be of no relevance to gear air, but it might only be the only block of land we have. So it's about gifting land rather than the solution of affordable housing. Just purely about gifting land as the, to the former housing trust, regardless of gear is finished or not. Correct? Mm. 
but as, as the proposal was developed and was approved, the status of gear ad will be actually known and will have to then be factored into where we go. Um, I am not as confident as knowledgeable or sure that in six months it's going to be all of a sudden moved um, to the stage where it's beyond being able to be used for something like this in the future. None of us know that for certain. Well, I'm not saying that, but gear estate is ready to go, isn't it? So only, only the first stage. The first stage one, yeah, really, that was, and that that will take some time. Yeah. And the only way, to, it, it will depend on the board whether you want us to pick out subsequent stages, yeah. do the whole lot of balance at once, um, at the same time, or complete one. And that, I guess that'll be around the market, and that's entirely up to the board. That's how it should go. Any other comments, team? Well, well, <clears throat> quite happy to go around again because this is a change to what we're working on. Anyone else? I mean, I really want to hear it. I want it done that from Bromwell Vince because I'm not saying what we're a part of that council, it affects us in the greater region, but it is massive for Cromwell and it's going to be, if, if year end goes through, it's going to be massive for Alexandria. <coughs> and I don't put the devil's advocate hat on, I don't doubt there's any issue regarding people saying that it's going to be an affordable housing model and I think that the market being the market, the house price will come back 30%, 10, 20, 30%, who knows? And some of those people who are sitting on the sidelines the last 18 months will be able to get into a housing model 20% cheaper than they could have a year ago. I think the gifting of the land is an issue regardless of where it is. And if I'm sitting in a rate pass in my corner going, you're going to give away all this money over there and I can't get across the bridge in my community, how do you sell those things? And I think that's a, that word gift and how you play gold. So a lot of things that I struggle with, well, if it's affordable housing, then look at other the solutions to affordable housing. But I think the gift is a land for affordable trust is a tricky one. And I just don't know how you make it work. Present. There has also been just recently announced the, in the CCCFA, is it? The credit consumers, oh, anyway, something to do with lending. Lending, mm. um, that has been changed because it was so, um, tough for people getting into housing and they have now that has just been changed in order to allow people yeah. in that first part of the market to get into housing. You can still have a mortgage and a cup of coffee. And, and you can still go to Kmart and buy the order piece of clothing. So there is, there is, there has been stuff done by central government in order to help people in that space. So I just, I'm going to seek the vote, but through to that I just want to remind people that what we're voting on isn't whether we're going to gift land, it's whether we're going to take the process through to the next LTP or an amended LTP. So it's whether this stops now, or whether we carry on down the path that 67% of, yes, a high level consultation document to see if we should carry on down. So I'm going to call the vote. Can I and, just uh, check yeah. around the uh, LTP or amended LTP? Yeah. Because I don't think that this should come before. Anything else? So if it's going to be left for the LTP, it should be left for the LTP. It's not going to be an LTP. You're right. So what that's saying is that it pushes it out to 2024 as opposed to 2023. I don't think that should be looking to It probably needs that for clarity, actually, doesn't it? Because that is quite a big thing to do with the amended LTP. Noting that whether it's amended or the actual LTP. It's going to be a lot of work. It's, so it's, it's, not, it's not about just saying we'll part this until then. To inform that decision, then just going to take eighteen months to get it. Yeah. Which is fine, um, but just under that work is the work that we'll be doing not so much time. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. But actually, if something happens and all of a sudden we've got time on our hands. I hate to think that we have a resolution to stop you from doing it. No, but, 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 but hang on, but for whatever reason, you get a chunk of money from someone or you know, someone says we can do this as a resource available, why did we just hamstring ourselves? That's, all, that's the only reason I'm worried about. Um, yeah, we yeah. can. It's not just people resources, and the mean that LTP triggers costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah. Like Listen, the government have that so much, so much money, that they'll come for this one next, I'm sure. Oh, that's, that's the only thing I think you yeah. could. But if they'll come to it, then that's the solution. Well, could okay. that um, we also had a community um, that's sick of engaging, but we had to keep involved in them. Yeah, so they're going, well, there's going to be consultation for the next standing plan anyway, because we have to. It would just be far greater work behind it to make it an end of LTP. Um, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, but I just think it would hate to think it cost us an opportunity that might present itself. It may also cost us promotions. 
Yeah, true. Yeah. I'm quite happy if you are Neil Patel. Yeah, no I need an LTP out. It just yeah. makes it a lot clearer. And realistically, that means we've had it done within 12 months now. I don't think big, but I don't think that big. All right, I'm going to put that up. Um, show of hands. And um, Lindley, if you could put thumbs up or thumbs down through to Wayne, please. All those in favour, raise their hands. Thank you. Those against? The motion fails. Sorry, bad form on my part. I'm just going to clarify. I am, I am being pass. Yeah. C yeah. fails. Awesome. I think we know that's what we were doing, right? Yeah. 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 OK, thank you. Next, we come to, thank goodness, another easy one, a lot of time to <laughs> So just clarify, um, in the few more minutes, so the, under the original resolution, it was um, agree or, or not to mm. reset. So we've had a, a motion that, um, say that hasn't passed. At the moment, all we've got in, in the minutes um, would be A and B. So do we need to formally, do we need to, just ask the question, do we need to have a C as declines to proceed, or is that OK? Yeah, yeah. Is I it think it's plain in the okay. that we're not proceeding. And then it's up to the Affordable Housing Trust where they go from there. What do you think, Sanchi? Well, I think it would be good for us um, to advise the Affordable Housing yes. Trust. Because Immediately. The conversation hasn't concluded on this matter. No. Yeah. There will be further correspondence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and when it becomes a so, all right. Um, well, in conflict, Geordie. Geordie and Louise, feel it for her. Take us through. Thank you. Um, just before I start on page three of the <laughs> policy, there's a key word that's got missing a letter. Under the Central Otago District Plan, it should be acknowledges the threat, not the treat. I didn't pick that up, otherwise it wouldn't have been here. <laughs> I'll go on, you, you just left it there and see what else was in there. Yeah. Yeah. The mayor found it. All right, thank, thank you. So, um, so there's a national, there is national recognition that wild and conifers are in New, the New Zealand landscape. This saw the development of uh, the National Wild and Conifer Strategy and the Central Otago Wild and Conifer Strategy. To assist with the implementation of these strategies, the government has allocated 100 million over four years to control the spread of wild and conifers throughout New Zealand in the high um, threat areas. This fund is managed within Otago by the Regional Council by the Central Otago Wild and Conifer Control Group. Through the 2021-31 LTP, Council allocated 50,000 per year for the first three years of the plan for controlling wild and conifers on Council land. This is funded at a ward level and with no district wide policy currently, each ward determines where funding priorities are allocated. This policy provides operational guidance on managing wild and conifers on, a, on council land across the district. It also recognises its obligations as a responsible landowner and gives effect to the council's responsibilities under the Otago Pest Management Plan. The policy also ensures neighbours and landowner, landowners are, neighbouring landowners are informed of any work to be undertaken on council land to, bring, <coughs> sorry, to remove water conifers. Um, consultation was undertaken uh, for the funding in the L LTP, and this policy gives effect to implementing that funding. So, any comments before I ask any questions? Sorry. Happy, happy to answer any questions. Questions, councillors? I have a comment. Comment, councillors? Concerns me that as a council, we are now dealing with a wild and pines policy when the VCB is currently consulting on a wild and pines issue. It's a bit like the horse has got before the cart. Excuse me, it is. 
That's the that's the one. The most correct thing you said all day. <laughs> As opposed to the cart before the horse. <laughs> Well, I swear profusely. You can do it. Like, I really like to swear profusely now, if I may. Oh, we're actually we are. Carry on. I think you all know where I'm coming from. With this. I just wonder, you know, with VCB going through a very contentious process at present, gauging. <clears throat> Gauging uh, from our community and others whether they support a proposal to remove trees from the half mile, which is then this policy is coming in, which is actually saying if we vote on it here, that's going to happen. Whether VCB um, goes ahead with that or not. And I just think I'd like to say to His Worship, I know this is. When you brought this up, that this should stay on the table until we hear back from the consultative process we're going through the VCB, because I think it's just. It isn't this district wide? <laughs> it is district wide, but I tell you, tell you what, and it was done six months ago, a year ago, would we have the issue in five months? Correct. Okay, it's district, then, then the district pays for the, re, for the repurposing of that land over there, then, because that's the, that's the issue we've got. And we've got a district policy, but the, then the visitors have to pick up the remediation costs, right? And we're out there now consulting, and the consultation period should finish, and we before we even discuss what the district wide policy is, because it's just silly. It's just what's the answer to that? Mm -hmm. okay. Council one. It's council one. I know they've got only then timer, but I just want to clarify the consultations on what's to happen with the land once the fines go. It did conclude in it thoughts on the removal of wilding fines, but the overall consultation was what are we going to, how are we going to repatriate mm -hmm. the development plan. But we, what we're going to get though is we're going to get very views on whether a, our wilding pines and they should be removed. We'll come to that. Lindley then Tamer, and then Neil. Was, excuse me. This policy wasn't until after this policy wasn't requested till the last council meeting went out for consultation. The policy wasn't asked for until after we'd gone out for consultation for the Vincent Community Board the half mile reserve plan. Therefore, I think that this policy should lie on the table until the Vincent Reserve Plan has been concluded. It feels like you're sort of cutting it off at the knees from the ward after they've gone out to consultation without having finished the consultation. Mm. I think my thoughts on it were wilding pines are on the national pest register, not a district or a CODC pest register. And some of it feels to me a bit like saying, well, we don't want rabbits anywhere except City of Valley where they quite like rabbits. It's not an exclusion zone. And I noted in the policy, the statement, there is clear evidence that public opinion about wilding conifers can be shifted in support of them being controlled with greater knowledge and awareness. How much of that are we as a council or ORC as the pest management pushing out there to the public? The costs of controlling them now versus the cost of controlling them in 50 years time are substantially different and it seems like we are dragging our heels a bit on something that really that on the pest register we need to be doing something about. The problem here is in part is the, this use of the word wild in trees, wild in conifers because it's actually it's an all-encompassing description of not doesn't mean the tree itself is wilding it means that if i read it correctly it means it can cause wilding other trees to grow so it's a seed source and that's causing a whole lot of confusion at the moment you know we've seen that with the sugar loaf all these they're not wilding pines they're planted yes they were they were, they were planted but they are they are wilding pines in the sense that they are a source of seeds that will grow grow plants around the place that's not well understood i don't think and um, i don't think this policy actually really fixes that which is quite important to do so that so that's one thing that needs to happen 
I think that Martin sitting up on his cart behind the horse where he should be. <laughs> and unfortunately, some other things that happened, I think the mayor has quite rightly said, that issue now is about the repatriation of the land. It's not the issue about the, the pine trees. It's got past that. He said the pines are coming down. It's what it's going to look like afterwards. And, and that's to me is a separate process. So I think that this policy can go forward, but- No decision but, has been made where those pines are coming down. Right, but, didn't change what I was saying. But I don't believe that this council would be wise to adopt a policy on something that is so poorly understood in the community um, and without the community giving a chance to have some input into it because it's that significant. And there's, a, there's actually, dare I say, even a more robust story to tell about the background to what Walden finds are about, what's trying to be achieved here. And I don't think that we would be wise to sit here and adopt this policy today. It'd be very unwise. So you're I agree. We need to take out the conversation. How much can we consult on something though that's coming from a national policy that says this is the way that it's going to be dealt with nationally? I think what we need to be consulting on is whether we take any other responsibility to. We're not. I mean, we're not to debate on our what's also going on national. Yeah. It's we'll really responsibility on our land through the provision of policy across the district. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think back now, seven years ago. The, in our corner, the farmers have been doing that and DOC have been doing on their land for a long, long time at the cost of the land up. And to be fair, the council have been behind the eight ball by a mile because of the emotional attachment to trees in an arid environment we've got. So yeah, Mark Downs and all these guys and Naseby Forest and walked through the Angie's Pass been doing it for a long, long time at their own cost. So really, to me, it's... It's just a moment, it should be done. It's just that there is a bit of tension about it now, and Alexander, and that will go away. And Cron. And Cron. Well, but I mean, that's, that, is, that is a result of what's, like Neil said, it was there a long time ago. But right through the detail, there's a lot of them out of the days before us. They DNA the, the, the wild conifer, they DNA the seeds, they're everywhere, and they do take over. So, you know, there's been a lot of work done on it, and I just think, no one's denying that. No one's denying that. Um, well, I mean, you just have to look out on our hills out there and see what the spread is, right? right? But that's not our land. And those people will be responsible for getting rid of the wild and pines and the brood and the rabbits and the gorse off their land as a part of their tie into the, to the total cost anyone else in agriculture has to do. If you could just ask Martin what, what are the potential decisions that the Vincent Community Board will make? Once the survey is in, just leaving this policy to one side. I couldn't possibly. Um, what are the options? What are the options that are? Uh, I, I, again, we don't. We don't. A consultation is being done on the refurbishment after. Uh, and this worship quite correctly says that, but the responses coming back from the community will be reasonably well divided between get rid of them or keep them. Right, because there's a lot of people out there currently who are lobbying strongly to keep them. Well, now I'm confused because because if you if the Vincent Community Board decided on based on surveys or consultations or anything else that they're going to keep these pines, and if we let this lay on the table and then two or three months times bring it back up and say, right, we're going to adopt this policy, and it applies to. Vincent Ward as one as well of the other wards, those pines will come down. And, and even else has been taken down for the last single run years. So, the so, so I, Churchill is exactly correct. I, that the way the policy is designed is it's not going to be a board decision, it's going to be a district wide decision that on land that we own, we're not going to be an irresponsible landowner and allow wild well, it's, it's, it's a national policy as well. Yeah. Um, I'm, Lindley's not to speak. I just want to, I wouldn't normally do this, but Shirley Calvert's our um, rep on the Wild and Conifer Control Group, has been for a long time, and she made a couple of comments that she's asking to pass on. She can't be here today. One is, and it lines up with what Neil says, is that really this still doesn't define what a wilding pine is, I don't think, well enough. For instance, um, it talks of the Otago Regional Council Pest Management Plan that says the plan makes wilding conifers contour to Corsican Scots. There's no such thing as, you know, we, we need to be really clear what a wild conifer is in this, in this. And secondly, we'll know it. How do wild and pine sit in our world of difference? We're going to become a world of old trees. 
Yeah, and and so and it's sort of Sanchez said there's there's responsible it's being a responsible landowner is what this question is about. And which is what those farms have done. I've heard from Lumi, so I'm gonna to come to Cheryl and then we'll come back to Lumi. So what are we talking about when you say sustained control? We kill our own land. Yeah. If we remove wilding trees, then we will continue to remove any seedlings as right. part of our management. So, but then you've got eradication. So, what's the difference between eradication? Well, they will keep coming back yeah. as the seeds in the ground, and we'll have to continue to control those until the seed sources. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Seeds by all us and And we may also be subject to spread from other property. So we'd be saying if, we should, if we're eradicating the trees on the property, it's removing them and then continuing to take the seedlings out. Isn't it the same in the sustained control if you're going to sure. yeah. removing them or do you just leave some there? And no, 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 yeah, I'm just going to... Mr. Dock. Lynn Lake. Just think again that adopting, adopting the world policies predetermined the half mile consultation that the Vincent board is undergoing, and I think that's just steamroller and undemocratic. I think it should be left to lie on the table, or as Neil said, undergo more consultation so we actually listen to the people. But isn't what you're consulting on just what you're going to do with the land after? What is that what was asked in that consultation that's going out? <laughs> But it will also go through. Um, right. Raise a point that has troubled me deeply as well, and that is this that we know that Walden Pines are a hell of a contentious thing. We know that the Vincent Community Boards have gone through the ramp. The Sandra Passion of Kins brought to it today, and anybody who reads anything on Facebook will know that the Sugar Life's caused a lot of comment and problems. And I think a large part of that is. Um, People being frustrated they haven't had their say, or people not understanding why we're doing what we're doing. I agree with Neil that it would be, even though they are a, a, a nationally recognised pest, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I think it would be pretty bold for this council to go forth without consultation on this policy. Whether the Vincent Community Board wants to continue down the path while this is hanging around, um, that's up to the board. But. Is it is, the tail that wears yeah, the dog and yeah, the cart that yeah, goes yeah. before the horse? Is there an option though if we consult on it yeah. and the community come back and say we don't want you to cut down yeah. any wild and pines that, because that's not yeah. actually an yeah. achievable result of... Yeah. Yeah. It's been perfectly acceptable for all the rate cars in our community in the hill country to go out right there and make people start to do it year after year after year after year and get rid of their rabbits and their noxious weeds. But it's OK, all of a sudden Vincent's got a bit of a problem because some trees on the hill, we can't make a decision as elected members. We're employed, to, we're elected to make decisions. And that's it's a, it's a recommendation of the government, OIC, it's environmental issues. Everything's tick in the box, make the decision on it. Unfortunately, if it was that clear, this, this, the advice would be given through the Wild Conf agreed that this is a seed source for um, Wild trees on the opposite side of the river. There's contrary advice, and I've been talking to an arborist today who says, who, who agrees with the contrary advice, is that it's not a seed source for those trees on the far side of the river, right? But with respect, that's an operational matter. If we adopt this policy, the policy is policy. How it's applied is a matter for the experts on the ground. It doesn't mean to say if we put the policy straight away, those trees will get cut down. You're going through a consultation process that may be over time. Where's the funding going to come from? Is it 10 years, 5 years? No, the point is we're making a, we made a policy on affordable housing five minutes ago. It wasn't everyone's kettle of fish, I'm sure. I'm going to come to end shortly, but I know staff have got some advice on whether we need to consult or not, but I think it would be pertinent to hear now before we come to you, and just in case we're not going to be talking on the consultations. Um, yeah, we contacted the chief advisor at Taitua about whether we needed to consult on this, and the response was no, we don't need to because you're giving effect to the pest strategy, the Otago Pest yeah. Management Strategy, um, and that you're also giving effect to your own LTP. So you put 50,000 aside on Conifer's own council land, and this policy is giving effect to that in the LTP. 
I also note that our own significance and engagement policy says that we should engage in no significant public interest. And if I could just comment on that, I think consultation is it's always a challenging, challenging topic and whether people are interested or affected in it, and, and it's in quite a lot of legislation. But I would have said following on from Tamer's comments that you would consult if you were going to listen and change your position. Um, I think around the table, a lot of people have said it's an acknowledged pest and um, the comment was made, would we change the position if people come back and said, keep the pest on your land? Um, and I think, um, or, or don't don't remove one of this, I think you've got to be quite sure that you're open to change your view on consultation if you go out and do it. The policy is not about whether you're going to cut them down or not, because of the way you just said, there's national things that's telling you it's a pest, cut them down. But the policy is also about um, how the community get told about it, um, how they be recognised that you do it, and those sort of things, and what's going to happen. So you might include in your policy, if you're going to say, you might be going to do the land afterwards, the outcomes you expect, because otherwise, if you don't, you run the risk of saying, every time I want to chop down a wilding pine, I need to make sure that the people out there are going to be happy with it because that's how I do it, where I do it, who gets the firewood, um, the tracks that are left on the land, um, the, the mulch, they are the issues that I think are more important in the policy than actually whether they come down or not because that's a given, they're coming down. At some stage, they're coming down. It's just, it depends on budget is when we do it. Yeah, and um, you've raised a couple of things there, Neil. Um, we can, as you know, take trees down under the Reserves Act without cons yeah. That's what we do to properly manage reserves. Um, you can make amendments to the policy to if you think you need to do that. The policy in its current form says. Until end before I forget that we have a um, Just note question three of the survey. Asks, um, the proposed development plan for the Alexandra Half Mile Recreation includes the removal of wild and conifers. Support this? Yeah. We know. We must know. We do. Uh, that report has, hasn't come to the VCB yet. Oh, right. And I think, and, and we've, we've got the results in here now. I just think it's just really an insult to the VCB that we're going to be discussing something we commission. So, right. How do we get around asking that question then? It seems like a question that shouldn't be asked. This is not a district issue. Yes. yes. So yes. we're getting tired up. And OK, I feel, feel I've been watching. I'm not on social media, thank goodness. But at the end of the day, whether it's the other parts of operation, this is a district issue we're taking across the whole region of all in the future. Not just the urban either. Let's make that short and clear. I'm saying this does touch as a rural point because you go and put development out of the back of Lake Onslow, and you've got a forestry block for your carbon credits, you're responsible for wilding pines yes. taking out all over. So yes. this actually affects us, the rural component as much as anyone. But I think we've got it. How yeah. that how that plays out and hits it, especially over here, that'll be, that, that'll be a good another and question that's going to be asked is when does it stop? Because we've got pine trees in Pioneer Park, are they going to be identified as a seed source? Go to Naysville well, and have a look around in there. The science, the science says 10 k's, right? Some of the science says 40 k's. Yeah. Well, we're not, we're, we're not, not we're, 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 we're deciding whether to adopt the policy, which would help clarify the view around the table. I'm happy to, if there's a C, I'm happy to move A and B. And I think that's the part of it, Martin, is it's around managing them. It doesn't, the policy doesn't say we'll remove every pine tree in the district, it just says we'll manage. A few, a few the, current, the current advice staff have been given us to get rid of all the pine trees. I think that's probably what it would be in an ideal world if you were looking at it from a biodiversity point of view, but it's not exactly practical. Right? 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 You've been advised, you know, and I think the point should be made that not all pine trees are a bad thing. There's a list of half a dozen or so here in the policy, and they're the ones that are, have the propensity to spread in central Otago at a fast rate. And there's trees are playing a part, they are different pines, they are, they are not so much of more ornamental if that's the term you want to use. Um, Lindley, I think you were wanting to speak. Yeah, I just, yeah. Uh, just uh, wanted to say for the past few days, I've to go and remove 
the pine trees have my respect while we're still undergoing a consultation. That just feels so wrong. Thank you. Nigel, I've recognised that you've moved A and B, but I'm not going to progress with that because what I'm reminded to do is this. I think that consultation question is a live one that I would like to deal with first one way or the other. Because if we if we go A and B, uh, as you're intending to move, I would be thinking of not supporting it because we're not consulting for that reason alone. So I would like to deal with the consultation issue first before we go back to that, if that's OK. Um, so what I'm suggesting, and still time for further discussion, is that we A, receive the report, and B, sorry, Wayne, I'll go slow this time, Thank you for that. requests that the CEO further develop the Wilding Conifer control policy relating to council owned slash controlled land for the council to consider for public consultation. So my mind is that I'll put that to be seconded by Neil. If that fails, then I'll invite you, Nigel, to move A and B. Can we have a discussion on that, Jane? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. I'm just, we're not going to consultation. That's, that's the first question. That's the first question. If that's answer that, then, then we go to Nigel, who's wanting to move that we just. But I mean, I guess for the time is unfortunate, and once again, very unfortunate coming around where it is now with the Clinton community up there. So you've got a district policy, and there's a, and there's a hiccup here. Now, I guess because the policy goes through in the way it is now, it doesn't ultimately affect the business. You can have, you can have your requirement here, because only relevant to that block of trees, correct? No, it's about there's about three or four other blocks around on Councilor Land, which is, but this is the one. This one is the one that's causing all the hate. Yes. That can still be a part of the process you go through, and it may be 20 years before that happens, or 10 years, whatever. But it, the policy is overriding the whole region. Your, your, your discussion through your Vincent Community Board is still alive. What happens to that? Okay. The reason this policy is before us now is a direct response to the fact is that the council has got a policy. The VCB did this in the policy. So, I mean, and just out of reverence to the VCB, I would I would suggest you let's just stay on the table. Let the VCB get the consultation process out of the road with the issues that we're dealing with. Them, then, listen, I had no problems with the policy. I just think. The timing is just makes a mockery of the process. Sorry. That we're out there now consultants with our community about what's going to happen there. And this is coming on the top of it. It's and it should have been in there from a start. Well, this should have been first and that would have been and that's how we got in this mess. Well, so we got we had eight, eighty percent of the cost was going to get paid by somebody else. Let's get stuck in. There was a reaction, we didn't have a policy behind it. And it, it is a bit of the Mac case yeah. that can't get in the head of the horse. Yes, but it's where my analogy come in the first place. And it wasn't LTP that we put out 50,000. I'm going to come to Tracy and then I'm going to come to Tamer. Are we allowed to consult on something that's a, like a national policy directive? Like, are we? I mean, that's the bottom line. It, <laughs> what's the point? We've done something which we actually don't have the I guess legal standing to do. I don't know if somebody correct me here, because uh, a, an actual policy statement coming down the line to us, which we get told about all the time, we don't have a choice on that. We don't direct that. That's already directed at us. So why did you stop that? I, I don't just. It's just a question. Legit. Is it? Is it do we have no choice but to cut these points down under the national policy statement, yeah. or is that a strong advisory? It's not actually a national but you would get them under the RMA as right. a strategy. It's a strategy. So you, it's not it's not directed. It is a it is a national position. So, so, we, so we, if we if we don't chop the points down, we don't get fined. We don't get no, so yeah. it's 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 we really really want them to do it as opposed to do it. And, right? and I think that then you've got the Otago Regional yes, Council right, Pest Management Plan, right. I think it's called. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't have an enforcement teeth either, but it does say that Wallen Conifers are a pest species. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, well, we're strongly urged, but we are not forced. 
I just want to really clarify that. You're not forced to return. You won't be fined for not removing. This is around a responsible ownership. Right. So there isn't that force. I'm going to come to Tim and then I'm going to come to Mike. Tracy asked my question, but I did also think that probably Martin's point around the timing is more appropriate than there is a resolution for going out for consultation on something that we're not willing to change our mind on potentially. Like this is the this is the direction. How can we ask people if they want the trees to stay and go if we know they need to go? Because if we have 90% of the public say they need to stay, we take that into account alongside the strong recommendation from Wellington. Yeah, it becomes part of the matrix, but it's a part of the matrix we don't have. That's what concerns me. Nigel. I would have thought that the Vincent Community Board might welcome this council passing putting in place a wild and conical control policy because that will give them context within which to consider the consultation that they're in the middle of right now. And if that's the case in this broader council would be to, to pick up the cost of refurbishment of the gateway entrance to the to our town. Well that that's a, that'll be an operational matter for discussion. Okay, I just really struggle. With everyone else in the region, especially in the rural areas, we've been doing this for seven or eight or nine years. And now that we're going to seven or eight years down the road, we're having this discussion now. But we've all been blown into the same rules that the national policy state and the whole the central, well, not the central Dome, Mr. Council. High country review, tenure review, anyone who's got land, lease on land, they've got to. So I don't know why it's such a big deal. Admittedly, it will be tricky for you and your board. And it's an unfortunate the time for you guys here now and Vincent because of election times and all that. It's hot but it's well of course, obviously. And and the information, if it's not as a piece of rabbits, it's a bit like saying let's go and go shoot around the east is coming up. You know, it's gonna to have to be dealt with one day. So why not? If you don't have to cut the trees down, and if some of those trees aren't wild in, and some of them can stay there, and you look at that, that's a part of the process you're going through right now. But for everyone else out the Angie's Palace and Navy and Middle March and all this country through here that's had to have done it, and I think we've played helicopters in the support of policy because every time I stand out in my street and look at my hills out there, they're getting slowly greed, right? What well, annoys me is that we're dealing with this now, and as a board, we've gone through a whole bunch of greed currently without this consulting, spending like payers' money. This just needs to sit there and, and wait and, and out of it. Just politeness to the VCB. Yeah. I'm very by the, the last, last two speakers have repeated themselves, so yeah. I'm going to progress things. But Sanchi, you had a question of the motion. Oh, no, I just had two comments. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, no, one is that the consultation is relating to the half miles around the development plan for that site. The second is this council has taken a position already on what it does around the rolling compass on council owned land, but did that in the long term plan, which it consulted on, where it put money there. Okay. I suspect that this might also require a show of hands rather than an eye because it just may be. So, so the the thoughts is this is what we've got at the moment. If this goes through, then we know what we're doing. If it doesn't, then we know where I'll be seeking Nigel's um, earlier motion. Um, Worship, I'm just worried. Yeah. I don't think we in the councillors understand a what a wild and conifer really is. And B, whether we understand and listen to what would actually happen by the implementation of B if this resolution goes through. Um, and that concerns me because what I've heard people speakers come and say about it is that that um, there's a policy statement, there's a strategy actually, there's no requirement to go and do it. We're incentivized to do it by central government and, and, and regional councils as well. Um, but everything points towards it's being the appropriate thing to do. The regional pest plan says that it's a pest to be managed under a program uh, under a, um, a progressive containment program. That means it's ending up to get so it's all gone, but it can't be done overnight. Um, and what we've seen is that the the community have expressed their concerns about how we have done it. We've got an opportunity now to develop a policy that actually tells the community how we are going to do it with their input. I don't see what's wrong with that. And I, you know, Martin, they can sit on the table, but it'll do nothing. Do it this way, it actually does something at the same time as your process is still happening. Right? And the two won't interfere. And I think that's that's the best part about doing this next step. Yes, a bit more work for the team to work on and saying, well, that's about the community outcomes that they expect. Yes, we're all right on our side, perhaps, but we know that doesn't work when you're in this game. Sometimes you need to take the community on the journey. 
at least they've had a chance to understand. They still might refuse to understand and accept it. It's not about what Stu's saying about how much money's being spent and who's doing it. That's irrelevant. This is about what we're going to do to control and manage our own land. Effectively, it's a bit like developing reserve management plans, where you have these sort of things in there as well about how you're going to manage your land. And that's all that, that what B is trying to do with what's being proposed. So, so just can you just really clearly tell me? Sorry, can you cut the link? Could you start again, please? We don't have a reserve management plan yet. We're making major decisions on reserves without a reserve management plan also. Thank you, Sanchi. Yeah, yeah. uh, I just, uh, just for clarification, uh, Neil, um, consultation and taking the community on a journey, mm -hmm. and I guess in my mind, the local government act is, is two different things. Mm -hmm. And so the, the purpose of consultation is to get the community view. Yes. Uh, and it's not to tell them the story or take on the business. I think it would be another pro another process. I get it's part of it. Bad, bad but choice of words. The purpose of the consultation is to take that feedback and use it as a tool in the decision making. I think we're talking about the same. Same outcome. Hang on, the, I'm going to. The community, well, the community need to have had a chance to say what they think about it and influence the policy or not. I guess it's different to taking them on a journey. Well, I, I, what, 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 I, what I was saying, you need to get them so they understand what the journey is in the first place. and. Because oh, they don't know what the water's got the definition is, they're not there yet. But the housing de definition is in the mm. policy. It says there and it talks about public opinion being shifted in support of them being controlled with greater knowledge. We can put that out, but that's not consulting, that's putting out information. I think that it does define what species are regarded as wild ones, but there's also the complexity of were they planted as a forest or a shelf, are they still maintained for that purpose, etc, etc, and that's the clarification I think is missing. I'm going to go to Louise and then Nigel. Um, well, just on the definition, it does exclude um, commercial forestry, right? and it, it's whether they're planted or landed by the species, excluding forestry. But I just wanted to say this, just one thing, if you I'm going to go down the track of consultation. Have, have I think about time because the eighty percent funding from the one comes of program is already part way through, and so anything up to now we've lost. Um, there's two more years. Mm. Well, I, I mean, the chance is referred to. We've already consulted on this issue in the LTP. Um, well, but and. <laughs> Would you like I, I think we could carry, we could simply go on this table for the next half hour saying the same thing again and again. Probably won't be done um, Well, <clears throat> um, I think it might be a, a more um, a clearer path if we maybe put my motion first. And if that fails, then put your motion. I think it's the wrong way around. If yours succeeds, then we're going to talk about consultation. Yeah, six and one half doesn't be other. This is what we've got in front of us. Sorry, all due respect. If one gets passed, you don't need the second one. Mm. Nothing more to vote on. So sorry, doesn't work. But well, I'll, I'll, I'll put my motion again. But we've already got this motion live in front of us. Oh, no, sorry. Can I, okay. It's just, just with respect to community, can we not wait for consultation is finished before we make any decisions today on policy? Well, I think that would be the um, a reason to vote against um, either of the motions that are likely to come. Tracy. Quick question. Adopts versus develop, is that just to tidy up some things? Just so I'm clear. I think we need to, we need to amend B before we vote for that. To what? Well, at the moment, I'm going to am I further developing the policy. Yeah, because yeah, that's what I've just a little bit confused that from that. That was, that was my exact intent. I would have thought that what I was trying to convey is what we've talked about and what's been raised. There's stuff that could go into that policy that's not been included. So that's what I meant by the okay, so if that's, that's not clear from, from what I've said and what's been said, then, then for you to let us know. And or would it be as much as to adopt the world of um for consultation? Yeah. Because I think the policy itself is probably perfectly fine, but the surrounding, when you mentioned about taking the community on a journey, I think it's as much to educate the community about what, why we're in the situation, which can go in the surrounding. So developing a policy for 
um, consultation that says about the implementation plan and all that sort of stuff. Mm. That's the part of the development. And then I thought out of conversation today, there might be other things that the staff might think, actually, we need to cover this, cover that. But yeah. and if it come back the same way as it was now, ready for public consultation, then who would I be to argue? We'll see what the people say. So. Yeah. So it would come back, it would, it would be, so, so what you're saying is that the consultation document, including potentially a slightly redrafted policy, will come back to us before it goes out to consultation. But if we've consulted yeah. already and put money to eradicate wild and trans in the RTT, it will be completely contradicting ourselves on something we've already come consulted on. Which would be a, a reasonable reason to vote against this motion. But as long as everybody yeah. there knows that they actually did consult through the LTP on more than points. Yeah, I, I would think it's a long vote to say that we really highlighted $50,000 yeah. to the Wild and Conflict Control Group. Through the well, yeah. long term plan, we, we did consult on everything that is in the long term plan. We, we chose certain yeah, words thank to you. be targeted consultation. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you're comfortable with the you people have a yeah. consultation, then you vote against this money. Yeah. Yeah. The, group, the work that the group has done and how that has been highlighted over the years in our local media, both work that we've done together with, I don't think there's anybody who doesn't understand that there's work being done to eradicate wild pines in central Otago. Okay, I'm going to bring this to a head. We've got a motion in front of us. It's moved, it's seconded, it's had a significant amount of discussion. I'm going to ask for a show of hands, Lindley, thumbs up or thumbs down again. All those in favour of that motion A and B, please raise. Actually, no, sorry, I'm going to stop. I'm going to move A. Let's proceed. <laughs> All those in favour? Oh, oh, okay. right. Okay. <laughs> 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 what's the man B as well? B, B, what? I don't think B still sufficiently. <laughs> <laughs> recommend. Uh, I just. <laughs> Sure. Lindley, can you just pause a moment, please? And perhaps the easiest way forward is to put your hand up because Wayne's very good at letting me know when you want him to speak because you're cutting in and out as well, so we can't pick up on what you're saying very well. Perhaps it's actually more you're developing if on this one, requesting to develop a consultation. Document. A, a consultation mm -hmm. document for the draft wild and control policy because the draft still comes back at that point. We haven't decided the policy. And so I, yeah. I, there is a policy that's been developed. Yeah, um, so I'm just trying to find the right words here. Um, the policy hasn't been endorsed by this council yet. So, no, but yeah. it, to say that we're asking CEO to develop a policy, well, the policy has already been developed. Yeah. Are we asking her to develop a different policy or mm -hmm. something else? I would have explained that already, and I'm not going to do it again. So, I, I, um, as for clarity for me, I think when we go away and we think that we're going to need to amend on the policy based on your direction today, some clarity around that would be welcome from you, mm. uh, because there's been a lot of different views around the table. I'm not sure it's conclusive that the council is saying these are the things it needs to include that it currently doesn't. So, that would be really, really helpful. But in terms of what we're bringing back, it is our consultation approach on this on a draft wild and conifer policy and the policy itself. If, if there's going to be any amendments to the policy, <clears throat> one of the biggest concerns which is coming out of the of our experience in Vincent is the rehabilitation of shed land that it has an effect on the recreational values that land currently offers, right? Council should need to consider whether it's going to become a different cost to actually uh, affect the wild and pine policy and the and the refurbishment or what's on the rehabilitation. rehabilitation of said land whether it has significant recreational um, qualities. And that's so you would be taking what happens to the land away from the boards. Yeah, that because well, this policy has taken that away from us already. Well, this policy is about in the district. You just have to have a few chucked on a rock after you're on the bridge. Would that come into the public consultation when you're deciding at the level of funding that how much of that funding is going towards rehabilitation? There was not in every case need money to be spent on rehabilitation. Majority cases, no. In this case, we'll take it. Ward, to, to Martin's point, wards can't expect to have the delegated power over property when you start pick and choose over what cost <laughs> that, that entails. It, 
I'm going to focus this on, on what's up here because we're now going off on another tangent. Yeah, so there's been a slight change to be, um, I'm presuming that's still myself and the deputy mayor. Can we just adopt the policy or not? <laughs> well, that's, that's what we're trying to get to. Are you okay seconding that now? Yes, thank you. I'd hate to repeat myself again. <laughs> right. All those, in, so we've moved eight, we've received the report. All those in favour of B, keeping in mind what we have if this fails, please raise their hand. And Lindley is, it doesn't really matter anyway. Okay, that motion has failed. Nigel, I'm going to uh, invite you to do what you want. Good work, I'm happy to move recommendation B. Any further discussion needed on B? We need a second, don't we? Yes. Um, who seconded that? Oh. Tracy has seconded that. Thank you. On page three, four. Oh, do we, is there any new or further discussion to that? In that case, I'll ask all those in favour to raise their hands. That's Thank you. I'm going to give us a break of 10 minutes. There's been some. Um,
I walk down. Three to gold. And Oh, Ian's gone. Ian's gone. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Ian's gone. 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 Yeah, well, we'll be Good afternoon, everyone, and um, I'll take the paper as read and then I'll hand it over to Ian, the finance manager, to take you through it. Okay. The surplus as at 31st of May is 20.1 million, which is 3.5 million payable for budget. The income of 68 million is 629,000 favourable, with the main income variances relating to the land sales and development contributions, and then that's offset by the grants and subsidies, interest, use fees and charges. The expenditure of 48 million is 2.9 million favourable to budget. The cost of sales in Dunstan Park and Cemetery Road is unfavourable this month, but by June it's more in line with budget. Capital revised budget is 65 million. And only 51% of this has been spent as at 31st of May. It's unlikely that the remainder will be spent at year end, meaning they'll be carried forwards again into the next financial year. And the large portions, once again, of the underspend relate to the Cromwell Master Plan and Three Waters, which has been driven by supply chain and resource issues affected to COVID. Are there any questions? Questions, councillors? Before any more questions, I'll just add to page 404. Um, so Jeffrey asked me around the comment was put about the 500k contribution towards the development of the Roxburgh Community Pool. Oh, the word contribution doesn't signal that we are giving a grant. It's purely just the way we worded the collective amount of loan and reserve funding. So um, if that creates confusion in our community, we'll break that out a bit better for the next report on this. Yes, thanks for the next report. That would be fine just to clarify. Never yeah. know who's reading this in two years' time. So I was thinking, and also the people are reading it mm. currently. Yeah, I'm sure that. Any questions, Tim? Um, I'm going to move that the report be received. Somebody second that. Thank you, Martin. For those in favour, right. Right. thanks to Carrie. And before you leave, young lady, just a note of thanks, Leanne. We recognise this is your last meeting. So it's been marvellous to have you here with us for two years. Three. Three? Three. Yeah, as I said it, I thought, oh, no, it's been longer than that. Yeah. That has been really wonderful. You've brought uh, a great ability, not just to you, through yourself, but to your team, to be able to explain the inexplicable. Mm. Or what at times it seemed inexplicable. So thank you for that. And to um, the councillors. <laughs> and appreciate the, the Tina Whaimahi that you've put into this organisation and wish you and your husband all the best in Ashburton. Yeah. And um, yeah, thank you. And I wish you all the best by three elections and for the next couple of years as we work through this transition. I am going to miss you. <laughs> I'm leaving you a very capable hand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, we leap now to page 501, which is the status reports. Yeah. Um, we've got a remuneration authority on the floor. We did that when we were here. Well, I'll wait. Thank you, that's fine. There have been accusations of adult short term memory, are wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Are you on the you start? Are you still on the car? No, no, sorry, you've had a bad day. I've had a bad day already. <laughs> it's getting to the point of bullying. Well, we'll take that. Shots for now. Anyway, um, I want to draw our attention um, in this um, <laughs> to the petitions on page 507 because generally speaking, we would just receive reports and that is what we may yet do. But in terms of the petitions, and I note that Realistically, um, the, 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 we've already received one of these. So the Groundswell and Taxpayers Union petition, there's two of them. So there's one that we um, 
have an, a binding referendum that we well, on the issue of three waters. So it's a bit vague, but I think we can say that it's a binding referendum to say no to three waters or to stop three waters to use their expression. And secondly, for council to vote on the, the funding of LGNZ. Now I see three ways forward with this. One, we can receive the report as a whole, the whole government's report, and that simply means that yes, we've seen what you've sent us, thank you very much. Two, we could do what they asked, but I think that that's a step way too far. Or three, we could seek a further report on either of those things. Um, I'll put my spoken at the moment. If we're going to have a binding referendum on stopping three waters, can we also stop GST in the district? <laughs> that would be quite handy because it's essentially the same thing. The government's promulgating a law as they do. A binding referendum will cost, well, a referendum will cost tens of thousands of dollars and be meaningless. Yes, precisely. But is there uh, any councillors who wish to have a discussion regarding LGMZ and funding that organisation? If there's not, then I will assume. Oh, there is, <laughs> Nigel. Sorry, I missed your hand. No, he didn't. He didn't put it up. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I, well, I, it just, it, 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 I think it's of interest that both um, petitions share a common lack of um, faith in local government New Zealand, and there's a lack of faith that I share, and, and I just wonder what mechanisms may be open to us as a council if if the mood around the table is that we feel LGNZ have not been um, adequately representing our interests to government in the matter of three, in particular in the matter of three waters, whether there's anything more we can do to express that dis dissatisfaction um, without going to the extremities of of withholding subscriptions or leaving the organisation. Um, and, and it would be my perception that there is a, a reasonable amount of dissatisfaction around the table with LG and Z. Um, yes, um, just to note before um, coming to other views on that, one thing we have done is there's a remit going to the AGM. And I think one of the major reasons that many people have agreed with LG and Z was the entering of the MOU with government and particularly with doing that without consulting or discussing with members. We were told at a conference this is what had happened. So there's a remit going to the uh, the AGM yeah, this month or next month, it's very soon, um, that National Council will no longer do that. It won't enter into MOUs without consulting its membership and that has been seconded by this council. So we have taken moves right at the core of, of the herd. Um, other comments or thoughts on Nigel, uh, uh, Tony? Uh, I thought that it would be a good idea to offer the ability for LGNZ to tell us why they offer value potentially. That's a lot of people yeah. dissatisfied, a lot mm -hmm. of councils. I'm guessing they some information on why they think that they are relevant still in this day and age or what they're offering that's something we're going to be paying for. So perhaps a, a letter of invitation slash a request to the president and or the CEO to join us at a meeting Teacher? to answer queries. That wouldn't require a report, would it? They... That wouldn't require one. Well, this practice that you have some public input based on a report or a decision that's being made by the council. So you could just invite them. I guess the question is you're inviting them and you get the chance to talk to them, but there's no decision that comes out of that meeting. Mm. Having said that, if they came and they talked and we remained, sorry, I'm going to rephrase that. If they came and they talked and a majority of councillors were dissatisfied, <coughs> then we could come back to what is being asked here. This, you could yeah. cheat me things. Mm? You could actually do a really quick report that had these two agenda items, or you could make, can we make a recommendation, a resolution from this, these receiving these petitions? I think it would be for me to bring back the Yeah, report. well, you could, so you could invite them to come along, have a covering report that covered it, that provided the opportunity then asking them to respond to these two petitions. That's what the purpose of the meeting's for, respond to them, come and tell us about that, and then we get the chance then having heard them, maybe to make, some recommendations or resolutions after that, perhaps. So, so the report 
should it should have staff advice in it. Yes. Issue it could be just, well, that could be. Tim, Tim could do as a maybe a. Well, what we could do is, is we, could, we could follow Neil's path with a simple report that says we've received this petition, these petitions, that that cast dispersions on LGNZ. We seek LGNZ to come to. Yeah, the yeah. Of it. We don't need to do anything more then because I wouldn't be saying that right yeah, then we yeah. would say we're going to fall out of LGNZ based on what they say. But what we might say is. We want to report on why we shouldn't because we haven't heard anything here to get us excited enough not to, which saves you writing a great thing. Yeah. yeah. In which case, why don't you just have them to get without any report? Okay. Could we yeah. invite them to a copy and chat? chat? Yeah, we can't make any decisions, which we couldn't yeah. do anyway, even if we had one. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. 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 we have had other people in recent times yeah. ask for the cargo today presented and there was no decision that yeah. 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 I think this would probably require more than turning up the public forum, though. Yeah, they will fight in this. You could you could you not bring them in through your mayor's report? I think we'll find a way. We had Terrace here for longer than five minutes. We'll find a way to make that happen. So, everyone's happy with that? Yep. So, and I'll get that along as we're not happy with one government as well. Well, it's a, it's a good opportunity for because I see these people regularly. Yeah. They're easily done. Yeah. So, I think it's a really good opportunity to. Do. To make a couple of points. One is just so you know, we have paid our subscription fee for the year. We are paid up until April. So there is no way of defunding them for that time anyway. So you may as well make the most of uh, that membership, if you like. Uh, if, if you do have a mind to go down any path about whether or not to consider your membership, uh, then I would definitely recommend that mm -hmm. any decision on that was made after uh, the election for a number of reasons, including that. At a time of such change, um, being part of the team and having the potential to advocate uh, or champion our influences is probably really important. Uh, of course, LGZ does a lot more than just three waters, and so there's an induction program. So, I think it would be there for many to members that if you back away from them, you're not part of them in the same way. Um, I think that would be really important that it could leave any council that find it actually quite a political decision to. To do that, and we want to do it LD in the pre election period. So, if there was a mind to have that sort of debate, then I would recommend it was after the election. Yeah. Is it, without knowing the constitution or, or how the voting is, what guides the voting of the LDNZ, one of the problems is that there's clearly dissatisfaction from a lot of councils with LGNZ, but the tools we've got to express that satisfaction are just. Too crude, so you, you can say we're going to leave that organisation. Well, that doesn't get us anywhere, really. Mm. We're going to hold back our subscription to you. Well, but so what are the mechanisms to be able to to feel that, that what is widespread dissatisfaction can actually find a, a, a conduit or a constitutional means within that organisation to check to, to get a reset? Because then. And, you know, and the thing doesn't make sense. You could say, well, we'll just withhold our funding until you guys. So at least hearing what they've got to say is a first step. I think when you did that, you would hear a lot from them about what they had done to reset. And of course, this council hasn't had a chance to engage with them to talk about that, but I think they have really been on a path of dealing with that issue and the upset of council has come into the at the moment. Uh, the re I think it's part of council saying actually we want that more. And, and, maybe, and maybe just to anticipate, because I obviously mm -hmm. a lot of the satisfaction has been around the way LDNZ has acted, represented our council in particular, and counting a lot of councils in the matter of three waters. It's my belief that with the um, future of local government committees still working and, with, and having seen their interim report. Uh, and and looking at what LGN said said so far, I believe that we'll end up in a situation where there'll be the same level of dissatisfaction down the track with how LGNZ is representing councils in the matter of the future of local government as there has been with three waters. And it's essentially that they're sitting inside the tent acting as the laptop of government instead of representing as a, they're not negotiating they're trying to act as a partnership and that's fundamentally the wrong stance to be taken 
Okay, so I think we just received this report. We all know what's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write on the letters home. We welcome your attendance here now. Um, obviously, we received those governance reports. Second, the chamber. Thank you. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Community board minutes on page five four seven. Has anybody got anything in those they wish to raise? If not, I'll move them. Stephen will second. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Committee minutes on page. That's just audit and risk. I'll move those. Stephen will second them. Aye. Aye. Against? Carrie, the date of our next meeting is the 24th of August. I look forward to seeing you all then. And I will now move that we exclude the public given uh, for the reasons on page 577. That will be seconded by Stu. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carrie, thank you. Thank you to any members of the public who are with us still on the board. Thank you. I'll go check the signs, Wayne, but you just sort out the. No. Yeah.